five, we're here. Okay, um, uh, first up on the agenda is Avery Wolf, who's going to give us a little overview and information report on where we stand with all the stuff we've been doing with J.M. Goldson. So take it away, Avery. Thanks for having me. Um, so here's my short little agenda for you guys. I'm going to go over the forum first forum summary, which I'm hoping you guys all had a chance to review. But if not, I encourage you to do so after tonight. Um, and then we'll go over some preliminary survey results. Um, preliminary website results for the new project website. Both of those were launched the same day as the forum. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about, we'll look back at the schedule, talk a little bit about some upcoming events. Can hear Jason's voice. Some upcoming events and next steps for you guys. Um, and then we're gonna close out my portion of the night with a short little brainstorming activity. We'll just get right into it, and I want to start by saying thank you to everybody for all the work that you put into the forum. Um, we've heard lots of great things, and it was awesome to have every one of you there helping out at all the stations and talking to people. I think it was really great face time for this committee with the community, um, so thank you. Um, so as you guys, hopefully if you, if you looked at it, you know, and you were there, um, we asked some demographic questions um, just to get a sense of who was in the room, who was participating. Um, so of the people that responded, um, not everybody did respond. You know, some people just came to hear the presentation and left or maybe decided not to participate in this station. Um, but of the people that did respond, the Watertown residents, I think there were just a few people that said that they maybe had family here or owned property here but weren't actually residents. 66% um, were longtime residents who have been here for more than 20 years. Um, and then the large majority, 68%, were older adults or seniors, roughly ages 51 to 75. And then unsurprisingly, that kind of correlates with uh, most people reporting that they live in a household without school-age children present. Um, about 28% indicated that they do have school-age present uh, in their home. <laughs> Which that ratio, I think, is pretty accurate for town-wide um, data. And so one thing to think about going forward is how do we reach a, a younger crowd? How do we tap into the younger population? Um, and how do we tap into the population of uh, more recent or young residents? Um, another thing that we did ask is uh, where people live in the community. Um, and again, this was one of those activities that it seems like a fewer portion of people responded to. Um, so this is just a smaller sample size, but most people indicated, you can see the pins in the map, most people indicated that they were from central Watertown, districts B and C, um, a few from the outlying districts, but mostly from that central area. Um, and we did, along with this activity, we did ask, people if there were any specific uh, CPA related, CPA category related um, needs within each district. Um, and there weren't a ton of responses, nothing that stood out as, you know, super compelling. Um, so there are details about that in the summary, but I didn't feel like it was something that was um, like a really strong thing to talk about and, and present to you guys tonight. So the pom-pom jar activity um, was one that you know, we find really helpful with projects like this. Uh, we gave participants seven pom-poms to represent the 70% of unallocated CPA funds and asked them to distribute those pom-poms into four different jars, each representing um, one of the CPA eligible categories. And the great thing about this um, exercise is that they're forced to prioritize because there's not an even number. They can't evenly distribute the pom-poms. Um, so that's really uh, kind of a fun activity. And the responses came in at Open Space and Rec, um, or Open Space and Natural Resources as the highest priority at 40%, community housing at 26%, historic preservation at 18%, and outdoor recreation at 16%. Um, and I'll, we've asked this question on, in other platforms, so I'll um, kind of go back to this a little bit later too. And then the other thing that we did is we asked participants for specific project ideas. Um, and we actually had two boards. We had one that was asking about specific project ideas and one that was asking about needs related to the CPA categories. Um, and I think people kind of struggled to figure out the nuance between those two. So there, there was a lot of overlap. 
um, and most people were, were pretty focused on project ideas. Um, and you can kind of get a sense of needs through, through that, but we, for the purposes of this summary, we just lumped all of those responses together. Did you have a question? Yeah, on the last slide, did you actually count the, the pom-poms because people were worried about the size of them? We did, yes. Mm -hmm. We counted it. They, it. The size didn't matter. We just counted each individual one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody loved that exercise. Yeah. The agony of, oh, where do I put my last one? It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I just put it in my pocket. So <laughs> So these were some of the, the top or most common, uh, most popular responses for project ideas. Um, acquire and protect open space, um, specifically underutilized land for open space. Uh, protect and preserve natural habitats, including the Charles River. Um, create bike and pedestrian trails. Uh, speci specifically, people um, noted that they want to connect existing trails um, and recreation areas. Uh, preserve and create community gardens, protect historic houses that are threatened. Um, specifically, some people talked about acquiring and converting those houses to affordable units. Um, protect and adaptively reuse um, the satellite North Branch Library, among other potential sites that people talked about for affordable housing. Um, establish a housing trust, a first-time homebuyer program or rental assistance program, and create affordable and appropriate housing um, opportunities for seniors and aging residents. So those were some of the top um, ideas that came out of it. I do definitely encourage you to look back at the summary. There's some more detailed um, information about themes that emerged. Um, and we did provide like raw transcribed data um, in the appendices. So that's helpful um, to have too. That was a very, very detailed Summary. Yes. yes. Yeah. Sixteen pages long. Especially a summary. <laughs> yeah. And the the raw data is you know we want to make sure that everyone feels like their their comments are being represented and it's always helpful to go back and, and look at the raw data. Um, but the photos are neat too. Yeah. Those that, that so that made it longer. Yeah. But the photos True. were cool. I do. Will this um, presentation that you're doing be available? Are you going to put this on our website yeah. as well as part? I can absolutely of do that. Great. Yep. Thank you. So just to close out this portion, I want to kind of get a sense from you what you thought about the forum. Was there anything that you felt like we could have done better or we could improve for the next forum? Um, what conversations have you had with community members since the forum? Um, have you done anything to kind of try to keep that conversation going um, and keep the momentum going? Um, so I'm just going to lay it out and ask if you guys have anything, you know, any ideas or anything that you want to talk about. Well, I thought the location was good. Tufts did a great job. I mean, there was plenty of parking. There was a handicapped entrance. You'd have to come in, but it was available. There was a handicapped mm -hmm. entrance. I mean, walking up that back stairs was problematic to some, but I thought the site was good. It, it just 140 chairs was perfect. I think we, we left out there. They added more. Having people. room for the stations around the room mm -hmm. that worked out good. Sure, mm -hmm. the refreshments. I, I thought it was there great. are plenty of seats. People just don't like yeah. to go once it starts. People, mm -hmm. it's like church. People are reluctant to like make way to the front yeah. rows. There were plenty yeah. of seats. Yeah, It was good. Mm -hmm. I thought it was good, too. Um, I mentioned it to one of your peer GIS colleagues, mm -hmm. whose name is Escape. Barry. Barry, that there was an error on um, Whitney Hill Park. Yeah. It listed as permanently protected. We looked into that, and it's protected under Article 97, so it's theoretically protected, um, but it doesn't have like a conservation restriction on it. So if that's, I think there were a lot of people were talking about that. Um, those are different ways of protecting um, land. So I guess in my eyes, it's not permanently protected. Right, so because it theoretically could be reversed. Mm -hmm. What's that? It's not permanent. It's not. So when people were like, what? It's not? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure. And then I had to pull one of my colleagues from the Conservation Commission over because I was like super confused if your information right. was right yeah. or my memory was you know, faulty or something. Yeah. So just if we could fix that well, for the next if it, time. If it is uh, Article 97 land, mm -hmm. then um, uh, and if it's dedicated to park land, mm -hmm. um, then it can only be changed with a vote of the legislature, to right. mm -hmm. roll call vote. So, um, so it's fairly it's permanently protected? It's, um, it's well, fairly it's permanent, but it is not permanent. It's not in the care and custody of the CONCOM. Right. <laughs> and it's, to my mind, it's not permanently protected. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I think that people, you know, see those kinds of designations differently. Um, but I did, I'm really glad that you pointed that out and we did go back and double check. Um, so we can, in the resource profiles, we can be sure to call that out specifically or um, make that tweak. 
I think you did a nice job. Of, I don't know if I passed this on to the lady. I thought the fresh flowers were a nice touch. It was the right amount of fresh refreshments. I thought uh, somehow you guys, I had heard it was only going to be round tables, which always make me a little nervous because you feel so far away from people. Right. But you found the right size tables, and I thought the layout was great. I thought the whole <coughs> thing was great. I thought Jen's presentation was um, really uh, very good, considering um, you know the density of the materials that she had to present, um, and uh, so I thought she presented in a very authoritative way. So you know, she not only knew what she was talking about, but it sounded like she knew what she was talking about. And it wasn't it wasn't overly long. It was concise. It got to the point. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like you lose people's interest after X amount of minutes, as you know. So. My, own, my only thing now, ret retroactively thinking back, mm -hmm. there were a couple of questions that she was asked that I felt really were not her role to be there. I think that people were thinking she was doing mm -hmm. more than, like, about money mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, that's yeah. not really, she's not here to help them. There was a lot of interests and money. That should have been nipped in the bud. Yeah. I tried I to, Maria. <laughs> the person was sitting right behind me. Oh, but um, I would have like I I mean I had to really sit on my hands because I wanted to mm -hmm. like because I just felt like that was so off topic and not what was appropriate for that form. Given everything we were trying to cover yeah. and bring it the was so in the weeds right. and it wasn't it's not J.M. Goldson's role to manage our money. That's what we're here to help do with Tom. Correct. So I there was a couple of points where I was just like she should have said mm, that's outside our role here. Yeah. And one thing I will point out is that we did take some of those questions that came up that night that we didn't have answers to right off the bat. Um, we did actually add to the website and did a little bit of research, and that's one question that I am going to add because people, you know, they're just curious. I about sent how you much an answer today. Did, you know, I saw that. Yep. Because I did the further research on the question. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for doing that. Um, and so that I, I think that's, I mean, in some ways, that's a great way to link the in person events with the online platform. Um, which can be really, you know, it's always kind of hard to make those connections. Um, so I think that those kinds of questions are, are a great way to make that link. Um, and we get questions like that a lot, you know, where we just don't know the answer right off the bat and, um, you know, try to move past that. Other comments from the group? Because I'll add it, chip in at the end. But um. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Some of the issues with the North Branch Library I don't know if anyone's talked to any of the residents in the area, but most of the people that hang around in that area, like at Joe's Variety and so forth, are adamantly against putting affordable housing on that site. Everyone's, uh, many people are always against yeah. it. You know? well, it was, <laughs> it's like, it's not like it. That's another subject. <laughs> There's another subject. Yeah, it's another yeah. subject. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say, it's, it's not for. I'll talk about this a little and bit. It, yeah. You're seemed, absolutely right, though, Alan. It it's seemed not. to me that that question on the housing was stacked. Mm -hmm. You know, the specific site, the others, everything was kind of general. Uh, the site has been evaluated by key people in town, and it's too small and too costly, really, to do affordable and, housing. And, is, and there are other projects that are kicking around town that would be much more beneficial when we... Right. Let's remember, we are not the pot of gold here. We are 2.4, we'll be a little bit more, maybe 2.6 next year in, in, in terms of the annual contribution. We're at about 6.2 million now. Um, the big issue is I think many people don't realize how costly anything is in town, whether it's buying land. They don't understand what it costs to build per square foot, and we're going to get into that a little bit further in our review here. Yeah, and I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more later, too, but um, one thing to remember is that these, these um, activities to generate project ideas is not necessarily a way for the community or for you guys to think that these are this is a list of projects that are going to happen or mm -hmm. going to pursue it's literally just ideas and that's all it is and um, you know it's really easy to to get kind of caught up in well is it eligible would it work is it feasible and all of that comes down the road this is just kind of getting us somebody has to ideas. come forward with mm -hmm. a project proposal right right Bob, you have anything yeah I thought the night went very well from the, the venue to your opening comments to uh, Jen's presentation was awesome. Um, everybody was super excited after to go to each one of these tables and write comments. They love to do that. Um, now my fear is how are we going to do the second one and how are we going to keep it at that level? Uh, are we going to be able to get 150 again? Are we going to be able to generate that enthusiasm? How many are going to be repeat? 
uh, you know, that type of thing, which I'm sure we're going to go through next. But mm -hmm. I'm interested to see what comments mm -hmm. for uh, forum number two, right. what we can do. Yeah. And, and I'd add to that, I mean, is the agenda, is it the same? Mm -hmm. Is it intended to be for like a, a replay of the last one, or do we sort of assume that there's more knowledge? Back the yeah. Could we come minutes. back to that in a little while, Jason? Because we have that uh, to yeah. talk about that. But just, I just first want to just give Avery the best sense of what you thought about this particular form. Yeah. So if you have comments to make with that, would you? You have anything to add for that? Okay, great. Thank you, Mark. Um, not quite sure there's enough opportunities for people who are at a certain things to sort of interchange with each other. Mm -hmm. So it was not. We each had stations, but people would come to the station and they would sort of come, say a few words, and then move on. So there was not sort of a lot of interchange with people who were at the same station all the time. Mm -hmm. So it was not, I don't know if there's a, there's a way to get that to be a deeper conversation that might be useful. Okay. John? Well, I was uh, my comment about Jennifer presentation, and I have some thoughts about it. You need to speak up. He's trying to record us. We have no mics, John. No, so, Get the back of my head here. Um, <laughs> so, and I have you know some thoughts about the uh, the next forum, but um, yeah, we'll uh, talk about that. And, and Mark, I guess I would agree with you. It's one of the shortcomings of the of the setup is uh, that it, it's uh, it's not necessarily conducive to you know to that discussion. Kind yeah. of thing. But that's what we had to do. Uh, most people I talked to, everyone thought it was probably one of the best meetings they ever attended. And they were very impressed with the level of the work and the, the level of participation. And, uh, I've been to a lot of meetings in my lifetime, and it was probably one of the best I'd ever been to. I will echo that. I got a lot of comments, and people said, oh my god, I didn't know Watertown could run a meeting like this. They loved the setting, they loved the space. Jen did an excellent job. The only criticism was that she didn't repeat questions that were being asked and people didn't quite know where to, what the context was, so we really have to pay attention to that. Yeah. People love the idea that as they went station to station, they had materials to look at, materials to pick up, and they got to meet people that they didn't know and listen to people that they'd never met before. And they, somebody said, hello, do you really know how to throw a party? And I said, well, I do believe in fun. I think when you combine information with great space, with people who are welcoming, with uh, you know, energy in the room and all that, we build community. And as I've said from the get-go of this committee, this is all about building a strong community base, a strong grassroots base of trying to get people involved. And it is critical to me, and it's a grind. It's an absolute slog fest. But I, I've heard this from town management. I heard it from counselors that were there. I heard it from the audience that was there. So um, people had a blast. They really did. That's, it was just wonderful feedback. And they loved going to the stations and meeting people who were connected to those particular aspects of the station and finding things out. The biggest complaint I had was about the damn things of sticking your little pins in yeah. something. It kept being knocked over. And I believe John had problems with the same little sticky things on his thing. Yeah. And he would say, that didn't really work very well. I said, well, <laughs> well, we'll try to figure out something else. I don't know what we can do, but you know, we'll continue to try to improve, for sure. Yeah. So uh, I, I would say it was, um, I went to a CPC meeting the other night with some people from other towns, and when they heard we got 100, over 140 people on the first get out and go out, because some people were giving me estimates of, oh, you had at least 200 people. I said, no, 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 I think that's, an, a, that's, that's a little bit overdoing it. But they said, how did you get 140 people to a community meeting? I said it was a grind, but um, they say, I'm taking notes on all my tips. But um, I'm just saying, it was, I think it was exceptionally well done from, on, it, on the whole team of getting this together. So. I agree with that. Well, thank you um, for your feedback. I, it's really helpful. So now I want to give you a little bit, um, just a, a sneak peek into the survey. Um, so it's been open about a month now. Um, we are at 235 responses as of today. And you can see this is kind of a little image of, of activity. We've had a pretty big spike in the last few days. And we've almost doubled our responses um, in the last week or so. 
give any theory as to why? Mm. I think it has to do, remind me when your interview aired? Um, your most I've recent been interview? Constantly, I just posted again for the culmination of the interview, Charlie's article, um, that, you know, I can, I can, I can tell you by date, I can tell you exactly what I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I know that Elodie has been doing a lot of work um, to kind of get the word out about it and, and advertise and make sure that link is circulating. Um, so I think that that, you know, this probably directly correlates with those posts and those. It was the next events. steps memo. It was the first interview. It was, again, another interview, uh, just a just an article about stuff and what to do and how to get involved, and then the most recent one, I um, have another one going out. But. Good, great. <laughs> and this first one makes a lot of sense, like right after right the forum. Right after, yeah. 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 But were they this is great. It. Yeah. It's really, really great to see this additional activity. I think you often see that big spike at the beginning, and then it just kind of tapers off. So that's, that's incredible. It's really good. Um, so... This is some of the initial demographic question, um, questions that we ask. Um, so you can see, again, most people have lived in the community for 20 plus years, but we do have a little bit more representation from the four to nine years, 10 to 14 years. Um, so that's great to have a little bit more diversity there. Um, again, majority of people live in district B or C, but again, more, a um, little bit more representation from the other districts. Um, and I didn't look at this for this um, presentation, but when we do the final um, report, I'll look at, um, for people that are, weren't sure, they we asked if they just wanted to share the street that they live on. Um, so we can try to figure out if we can get a better sense of where those people yeah, live. Yeah, I think that's important. That's a pretty hefty number. Yeah, exactly. It's quite a district. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have a little bit more representation from households with children here too, which is great. Both high, this is high schools, um, age children, and this is like elementary school. Um, what would the other be up there on that, Avery? You know, I don't remember exactly, but I'm guessing it would be um, like if people are multi generational households, or um, if there's other living sort of like if people live. Um, would it be two people or? Potentially. I mean, this household with no children would probably mm -hmm. be, you know, couples with no kids or, or roommates living together, so, but. So do you know if they did specify? Because I know there yeah. were poems in town and stuff like that. Right. So like four unrelated people and stuff like Yeah, that. I didn't look at it specifically, okay. but I, we did ask for people to explain. Um, so I can go back and look at that for mm -hmm. the, the final report Gosh. for sure. Thank you. So then these are questions that at the end of the survey, um, we asked if people would be willing to answer a few additional demographic questions. About 80% said that they would be willing to, 20% didn't um, want to share that info. So this is a slightly smaller sample size, um, but still pretty telling. 92% uh, reported what that they identify as white. Um, and then we have some more representation of the younger population here, which is really great. Um, but it is still a little bit heavy on the um, the older residents. It would be great if we could get a little bit more of these these younger residents. Mm -hmm. um, but this Jason's is great. on the cusp. Maria's on the cusp. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 not of a yellow one. <laughs> <laughs> no, babe. I'm in turquoise too. <laughs> not, not much longer. <laughs> but you did have a majority uh, under 50. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Which is different from the crowd that showed up. Yep, right. for sure. Yeah, and that's you know pretty typical. I think that like online um, engagement platforms um, and tools are usually a little bit more common for you know working families and younger people, and then um, in person evening events are more commonly attract the older older population. So that's not surprising at all. <coughs> Sorry, yeah. did you get a comment something about child care? Yeah, something about an email that you. I, did, I got it from a person who was not at the meeting, but sent me a comment about this, which I found a little bit comical because um, I talked to parents that do, you know, people do who young kids, yeah. and of course, being in household, two parents working, young children, they're going to be at home at night dealing with whatever they have to deal with. So this is a comment that has come up a few times in town, and um, I know other meetings made some accommodation for child care, and it was nonsensical. So. We clearly listed in our flyer if people needed some kind of accommodation to let us know. 
and we heard from no one. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain point that people just say things to say them, but until I get some real evidence of need, it gets a little ridiculous in my mind, just being very straightforward about that. Um, there was a, a sticky note comment too about providing childcare um, but, the night of the event, but it was you know it's more you know call you know I I'm so out there with everybody. You got a real issue? Call me up. Let me know what the issue is. I'm always willing to hear it out. I'll bring it to the committee. That's a simple thing. I assume you all would do the same thing. And if we have a daycare thing, we nominated you to run it. <laughs> That's all I do, Jason. <laughs> I just find it odd that somebody would, would even think that it's appropriate to ask for child care at a meeting like this. Well, I do You'd have to do it town wide. Yeah. You'd have to do it for every meeting in town. You know, if you have a group of parents that are all know each other, you say, hey, let's all hire a babysitter together. Put our kids in somebody's house, God help you when you come home, and you all go to the meeting. So it's a very bizarre comment. Yeah, I thought so too. Thank you. Oh, good, it, we're copacetic yeah. on this. Yeah. <laughs> Especially given the hours that we were running this and the context and everything. So, yeah. you know. So, um, we do have pretty diverse representation of types of household. Mm -hmm. um, it is a slight underrepresentation um, of single person households. I think the town wide statistic is somewhere around 30% mm -hmm. of single person households. So, it would be great to get a little bit more representation from those people. Um, I forget exactly how the others compare, but that's pretty great to see some diversity there. Um, definitely an overrepresentation of people who own their home. Um, I think it's just off of 50-50 town-wide. It's like 47 or something rent and 53 something owned. And so. it's changing rapidly. And the difficulty that we have is we cannot get into these apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. um, I've been chastised a couple of times for various political yeah. things to get in there and slip things in. But mm -hmm. it's, it's really That's hard to have the breakthrough in there. Mm -hmm. It's another challenge that we have some ideas on. But. Um, and then again, this is an overrepresentation. The median income is like in the upper end of this. I think it's like 93,000. Um, so there's definitely a, an overrepresentation of um, higher income households and a slight underrepresentation of the lower income households. By a wide margin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. It's all that bio check. <laughs> <laughs> So I will warn you, the next few slides are pretty text heavy. Um, there was not really a better way for me to present this. Um, but one of the questions that we asked for each category is we gave some examples of types of projects and asked people to rank them um, using like a Likert scale of, you know, do you think this is really important, somewhat important, not neutral, not important, very not important. And so this is based on the weighted averages. Um, this is the in order of how uh, these projects, types of projects were ranked um, for historic preservation. So you can see that the top one was preserve or rehabilitate historic municipal properties, such as town hall, better town library, um, and commander's mansion. And again, I can post this um, on the website so you guys can look at these pieces more mm -hmm. in depth later. And, um I'm just wondering about trying to get a sense of, uh, you know, so okay, this was the ranking, but um, was it that, um, you know, like number one was sort of overwhelmingly, uh, or was it kind of, you know, pretty evenly distributed, but this is how it ranked out, or? Yeah, I mean, I think because of the way that Likert scales work, um, they're all pretty close, um, or closer than some other ways of ranking. Um, but there is definitely some nuance there, and in the final report, I can kind of give you uh, the breakdown, because it is really interesting to see, too, like the top ones probably had a lot of, this is really important and somewhat important, and then a, you know fewer not important or not at all important, but there are a few in the middle or lower down that had, um, you know, a lot of this is not important, but also a lot of this is really important, but it's just that the way that they average out um, so it, it is interesting to look at those. Yeah, I think there's a little bit cleaner things. data on that particular mm -hmm. for yeah, these things. For sure. So I just wanted to give you a sense of you know mm -hmm. the types of ranking that's coming out. But um, when we close out everything, I can definitely give you more details on that. So then we also asked kind of an open-ended question: Do you have any specific project ideas? And these were some of the key themes that came up. Again, I mean, it's a whole list, and people talk about lots of different things. Some things are way off topic. Some things are very spot on. Um, but these are some of the things that were repeated multiple times. Um, 
are mentioned several times. Clearly people are somewhat unaware of what's going on in our town, <laughs> looking at that list. Yeah. And so, yeah, again, this is like, these are ideas that people are coming up with. Some of them, you know, might be totally nonsensical. Some of them might be really viable. Um, these are the kind of the things that we'll kind of tease out as we continue going with the project. May I ask you a question, Avery? Yes. Did you get any comments? Because there was the Likert scale, mm -hmm. and then so did you get any written comments of you know somebody maybe have their pet thing on the schools that somebody put that on there is completely ridiculous to me because we're doing 170 million dollars of renovation in our elementary schools and. We're in the MSBA for the high school, so this person clearly doesn't know anything that's going on with regard to schools. Right. But I, I'm just wondering, did you get any kind of additional info in that comment section on any of this stuff throughout the whole survey? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a, there's a lot more detail in the comments. Um, it's just with so much qualitative data, mm -hmm. um, it's you know difficult to to group things and give it more, a little bit more I, I, don't, I don't think we need so. a group by priority, but I think it's really important to just see comments because mm -hmm. it gives us a little more seasoning to this result, right. so to speak. Right, for sure. And yeah, I mean, like I said, in the when we wrap up the survey and I will do a full report, kind of the way that we did with the, the forum summary, but a full report on the survey, mm -hmm. um, I will definitely give you more details on all of those transcribed raw data comments right. will be That's at really the end. good. Thank you. Yeah. What well, some of the ideas were for the police station? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Um, I don't know that there were specific recommendations. I think it was just a adaptive reuse type mm -hmm. comment. Um, gener there, generic comments about was reuse. Was there anything about like relocating in the center of town? Because that was a big issue. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember hearing anything. The kids are about preservation, so it would be about, mm. you know, right. dealing right. with the, the old police. Oh, Taking yeah. that building mm. and, and preserving it. Yeah, the old police does really right. what, what some of the ideas are. Yeah. yeah. So again, going back to the ranked priorities is for community housing. Um, and it's really interesting because you'll see that, like, support programs that provide rental assistance and income eligible households is ranked pretty low. Um, mm -hmm here but in the comments in the open-ended comments subsidies for rental and first-time homebuyer assistance were the, some of the top things that came up um, so it's really interesting to to kind of see how people when they're presented with a list of choices how they rank them but then when they're given an you know open um, open-ended answer opportunities they might have something that kind of contradicts that The, the original, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I wonder sometimes when I see the top priority about the 10% if people are thinking in terms of like just to prevent board from happening. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe it's not as sort of like right, like where's the motivation right. coming from? <laughs> I mean, I could be on base about that. Right? We have achieved safe harbor status in the town, so yet we still have petitions because they have to prove it every single. Right, I know. It's a ridiculous waste of money on the part of resources in this town. It should be addressed in the state legislature. That should stick for a year at least. It's re don't get me started on these issues. <laughs> Rehabilitate existing parks, playgrounds, and our athletic fields is the top one. Wasn't that near the bottom of the list on yeah. the number of stars or upvotes in the forum? Yeah, it's actually the reverse, isn't it? Yeah, it may have been. I'm forgetting off the top of my head. And it might just be, it is really interesting how depending on the pool of people that are responding, um, you know, those kinds of rankings will yeah. change. And yeah, I think have acquired land range. was definitely a higher yeah, priority. It was definitely a high priority. It was the top priority. And now we've got to the Recreation. Like 
like pedestrian opportunities. So yeah, create and expand bike trails and walking paths is pretty low here, but it was the most, yeah. you know, the top. I think was, this was a the mushy form. category because they are put together as one funding category. Right. Yet they separate them out and there's overlap that people are not understanding again the nuances right. of the overlap and that's mm -hmm. where you get this. And I am very hesitant when we see rehabilitate existing parks, playgrounds, and athletic fields because we are way behind in during certain maintenance issues and then we get in that fine line right. what is maintenance and what is rehabilitation right. and we're going to have to address that as a team yeah. down the road. Yeah, for sure. But Very I can kind point. of see why somebody pragmatic would be like, let's maintain and enhance what we already have yeah. before mm -hmm. adding more to the stock. But we don't pay for maintenance, Maria. Maintenance is not part of CPA. Money. No, no, I know yeah. that. But they've changed the law, and now you can enhance a new park, add new playground equipment. Well, yeah, I know. I'm taking people to playgrounds to show them the really cool stuff that is out there. Yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's I'm just saying that maybe that's the logic behind mm -hmm. that. But who knows? We'll have to... Accessible yeah, no, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, again, there's some similarities there. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm looking for that, you know, common thing of what do you mean by enhance? What does that mean? Right, right. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's true, a lot of people are adding comments about improving landscaping, which is not eligible. Um, I mean, there are um, there are certain, it's one of those things, it's a fine line, you've got to just get more information um, mm -hmm. to really understand what people are getting at with that. Um, so when I see comments like that, I, I lump it in with things like enhance, um, mm -hmm. because I think that that's the general gist of what people are getting at, even if they don't understand the nuances of what's eligible or what's not. for open space and natural resources, acquire green space for natural resource and wildlife habitat protection and or passive recreation. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, now this makes more sense to me because people do want more open space mm -hmm. for passive yeah. versus more yeah. acquiring it for recreation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the distinction. It's very mushy. Mm -hmm. I think that's the distinction. People are all for the buying open space for passive and mm -hmm. natural, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but maybe not that we need more. We have a good amount of pocket parks, for, I feel like. I think every, most there's of There's not enough playing fields in No, but there's, I mean, there's a pocket Please, Leo, park. don't get me started on that one. <laughs> no, we have, there's not enough playing fields in the top. Leo, Mott, and Plum, Walker, Plum, man. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of passive recreation now. I'll say that too. Passive recreation is different. Either one. Either one. But we are not utilizing our playing fields when we're renting them out to other entities in town. <laughs> Please excuse me, especially right after school. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think your point about the overlap between passive recreation, open space, and active recreation is. You know, it's hard to, to parse those things out. Um, no, but this makes more sense so to this, me, this slide, yeah. because that's what I, because so, I was at the open space table. Right. People definitely wanted to acquire more land. And this was definitely the pom-pom winner in the whole yeah. shebang on the yeah. first yeah. forum. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, there's definitely okay. we can move on. a lot of comments. We can move on. <laughs> a lot of comments about, you know, preserving any green space that's still left. I, I've heard a lot about that. So these are some of the main themes with the open-ended comments. Mm -hmm. Definitely the ponds are, right. are a big one. There's a lot of discussion about Our ponds. very polluted ponds. Yeah. I'm surprised that most people yeah. know about it. I, it's a pretty yeah. issue. The Con Con has been doing a great job. Every year in Fair in the Square, they're running so, contests, yeah. educating people about the so, ponds and different things in town. Seriously, yeah. they have the best oh, food, in my opinion. Oh, thank at you. Fair on the Square. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you. They're gun ho We know it's all his prizes yeah. and the energy in the booth is fantastic. So people are learning. All right. So then we also did ask, this is very similar to the pom-pom question. Um, we asked people overall, you know, what, how would you prioritize the CPA eligible categories? Um, and again, open space and um, 
natural resources, passive rec recreation was definitely the top one. Um, active recreation got a lot more um, mm, attention here. Um, that was the lowest ranking one in um, the at, at the forum. So that's definitely interesting. It makes sense given the demographics. Yeah. 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 And then this, these comments over here, which again, this is just kind of themes, go along with this purple um, category at the bottom where, you know, if people um, weren't, or I guess it goes with both of them, if people were unsure um, or didn't, didn't really have a top priority. And most of it was that people didn't want to have to make a choice. They were like, I, I you know, really prioritize all of them or, you know, two are really competing for top priority. Well, is that a misconception when it says acquire land assets town owned? I think this was people talking <laughs> about um, having the town acquire land that they could then use either either they could protect it for open space if it's underutilized the town vacant is the land. The CTC is a different entity, are they not? The town, well, we never the, own the land. yeah, the CPC could that. pay for land that the town would then own. Or another or entity. Or is this your phrasing, or is this somebody else's this phrasing? This is from. It's kind of a combination of both, but because a lot of people town. specifically were talking about town-owned land. Okay, we have no undeveloped land in Watertown. Everything in Watertown <laughs> is being redeveloped. Seriously, it's all redevelopment. So that's the first thing. Yeah. So again, wording is important. That's why I'm asking: Is this your interpretation, or is this something that you're getting from there? And again, I absolutely agree. Acquire land assets town owns throws me off for a loop too. I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I would have to go back and look at the comments again specifically, um, but I think it was mostly people wanting to, if there's you know privately owned open space that the town could acquire to protect. That's very different than or what this says. Yeah, that's that's totally different than what this says, Avery. And again, language is important. Leah, would you no. want to say something? Well, I do. But Lisa had oh, there. excuse me, Lisa. Well, I didn't no, see I your hand. I was to your point. Since this is the summary, and my memory might be wrong, but my memory was that you had two questions, and it was acquire land and then rehabilitate town-owned land. And this is kind of thrown into, to me, I think it's they're both in that one category. So where where Lodi is wondering. Yeah, in it's, my mind, it, it's speaking to both of those things. Right, I kind right. of lumped together two different types of comments that were both about having town-owned assets that could be either used, like either protected open space town assets or town assets that could be developed into affordable housing. Um, I think it was generally about having land that the town has it as its disposal. Well, I would really appreciate if you would go back and look at that comment, because I'm looking at the category comment, obviously, which is cleaner, and then that throws me for a loop, and I think it's important. Yeah, for sure. That I, just, I don't think maybe that the respondents necessarily understand that. No, I know, Jason, but I just want to make sure, was this the respondent thing, or is it something that Goldson has put together of their take on what the mm -hmm. comments were? And there's a huge difference in that. You know, so uh, you don't know enough about our town to know what you're, I don't mean this yeah, in a yeah, disrespectful yeah. way, you just yep. don't know enough about our town to know how's that playing out For in sure. the dynamics of the community. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the same night that we had our meeting, there was another meeting going on for District D in a property uh, mm -hmm. uh, with a developer way. in the West End, and which is about 2.7 acres, and they wanted to put a 40B in there. We, there were probably over 100 people at that meeting. Uh, there was a, a school building committee meeting going on that night, and there was a meeting uh, of a showing of Dawnland about Native Americans in, in the U.S., so that we still got 140 people at our meeting that night mm -hmm. was pretty amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of competition in this town, but this, is, this, this was the point of contention. So it's, it's land that has been developed, that has been sold and going for redevelopment again, right. and there were people there saying the town needs to buy this land and protect it for the town, take right. control of our destiny. Yes. And that's why that's a, a loaded issue right there. Whatever comes in there, it's a, that's a loaded issue. So I, I really think it's important to clarify it. Yep. Yeah, I totally understand that. So moving on to website preliminary results. This is our lovely project website. I hope you guys have all been looking at You've done at a great it. job. It is cheerful, it's upbeat, it's graphic, it's clean, it's modern. I just really want to give my highest. People have 
said they just love it. Just looking at it makes them happy. So this is a good thing in these troubled, <laughs> troubled political Thank times. Yeah. <laughs> so I will say that the reporting on visits versus visitors is a little bit complicated, but we have 265 unique visitors, um, which means that um, That's a basically the to, web exactly the website months. tracks mm -hmm. if someone is visiting multiple the website times. from the same computer multiple times, which is the site visits. Um, but the visitors is people, um, unique people visiting the site from its own device. So may I ask a quick question on this, Avery? Stuff we have people that we do something at the library mm -hmm. to encourage people to do the survey. Will they be in they won't be counted as a unique visitor, they would probably be counted as a duplicate visitor because they'll be in this general situation of using if the, li using the a library computer. computer. That someone else okay, is. just yep. need to know that. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. But there's many computers, so it would have to be the odds of somebody using the same computer. Yeah, but if you were going to do a little, you know, like meet, if you had a little workshop, or if something. you were doing a meet the box yeah. thing, and you want, um, you know, meeting in a box, you want to reserve five computers so people can go to that after you're done, unless they're going to do paper. This gets into kind of yeah. a yeah, yeah. It's not a perfect sure you know system. Yeah, each know. computer has its own. Yeah, I know, yeah. but still. And it also means that it, like, if I go on the website on my phone and on my computer, my personal computer and on my work computer, it counts me three times. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, so it's it definitely not perfect. perfect. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, we have 23 registered participants, which is low. Um, Very low. And that's something that we definitely want to think about how we can encourage people to register. And I am working with, um, we're using a bang the table platform for this, and we have a tech person. Um, on the bang the table team that is working with us. So I'm definitely gonna try to work with her. I have a call scheduled in the next week or so to see if they have recommendations. Um, Cause we've experienced this in the past before with you know, registration being something that seems to be an impediment um, to people participating on the site. Um, it's something that all of these platforms require. We've used both Corbinize and Bang the Table and they, it's part of their monitoring system um, and how they they function. We've done our best um, to try to explain on the registration page, explain why we ask people to register. We explain that we won't give out their information. Um, we try to not ask too many questions to make it a long process. Um, but we can try to think about if there are other tactic, tactics to uh, encourage people to, to register and really participate and engage on the site. Because um, there are definitely tools that we want people to be using that aren't getting a ton of activity. Right Mark, now. I know you had some comments about that. Did you want to include them then? Yeah, but I hate these uh, test words. And I, I think they also want, you know, a special sign and caps and numbers. <laughs> it's really unnecessary yeah. stuff. It really is totally unnecessary. And I, of course, I'm using three data, so I registered again the second time. Um, it's also difficult to see if you can support somebody else's comment on the map. Mm -hmm. There's nobody saying, oh, I like that idea, or I want to have a dialogue on that idea. Yep. And now that we did the comprehensive plan, we a, a website where you could, you could mm -hmm. engage in sort of an online dialogue with somebody about their idea. But you yeah. can't do, it's not very helpful that way. It's not very interactive at all. Right. Um, and, and so that's the pin thing. Talk about the pin thing, The what? The pin. The pin. <laughs> oh, the, and the pin is different. I, I, I know, I, yeah. You know, some of them are not digitally adept, and so we're getting the pin on the right spot sometimes is difficult too. I get it close, and that's less of a concern. But, yeah. Um, right, and I, I mean, it is kind I think of. A, the, I think the map is a useful, a useful tool if people would use it more. I think if we get more people using it, then we'll get more people to use it, and people mm -hmm. will come on it. If we only have five you know, sites right. there, then we're at. I might have a problem with that. Yeah, and I and definitely so I would encourage. Real, a real critical math is important to do. Okay. Yeah, I do think that one thing that does encourage people is if they're if, if someone visits the site and they see a lot of activity. So we've that's actually one thing that we've done in the past is asked all of our committee members to go on and post, you know, two ideas or something, just so that there's more. If the site looks busier, um, so I would definitely encourage you guys to do that if you haven't yet. Um, that might be a way to kind of help people. I know it does, to some degree, it skews it a little bit because it's coming from you guys, but we can always, I mean, I, th I think that we can get the 
the IT people to remove those comments later if we, if we feel like we need to. But they're, right, like you guys are members of the community, you are allowed to have that input, and I, you could also use ideas that you've already heard. Okay, um, I think we have a want to. comment from my peanut gallery. I was just gonna say, I love the map feature, and when I verbally told people they got excited about it, but so whatever ideas you have, getting in, and I know it is a little difficult to be exact, but the people started saying, oh, I wish we had that for the bike pedestrian survey, this mm -hmm. online plan. Yeah. Um, so. I wanna was, piggyback on that, Lisa, because I got comments from particularly bike ped people and others Say, I would like to be able to take like a marker and draw yeah. a line through the map to say how I would like things right. to connect through Watertown if I wanted to go on a bicycle or walk. And I thought, because you're not going to go with a little pin, yep. it's like cross side, <laughs> little pin, yeah. little pin, here's my path with 50 little pins. Yeah. Um, so that I thought was a really, I don't know if they can add a feature like that. You might add. We, we've, many of us have gone to the meetings where we're looking at routing through the community, both walking, bicycles, etc. Yeah, yeah. And we actually sat down at a huge table like this and had these maps, and we all yeah. took our markers out and say, wait, and argued back and forth, and what's the best route to get through yeah. safely? Especially yeah. if you've got kids that want you want to cycle with and around the town. Right. So the pin thing is, I've heard a lot of comments yeah. about the difficulty. Yeah, I can ask. The IT person, um, if there's any flexibility with that kind of stuff, my guess is that they're going to say that it's not a feature they have. Um, and unfortunately, with these kinds of platforms, there's some limitations. A special what we can pin and meeting can't do. with the CPC <laughs> and we'll all sit there. Dots. Yeah, we'll do a bunch of dots with these here, exactly. Well, it, yeah. I think it's such a narrow comment, although it's interesting. I feel like it doesn't warrant like revamping like for that one comment, plus bike Roots are going to somewhat have to be where we own land anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, there are a lot I know of unfulfilled like, promises by people in town too. I know, but I think they're working on some of them mm -hmm. because I know there's one piece of land that they're mm -hmm. thinking about mm -hmm. putting, you know, putting a bike path through. Mm -hmm. John, did you have something to say? Yeah, so kind of didn't know if your hand was going up or down. No. Okay, just want to be sure. So I can check on that, um, and I'll get back to you guys. Great. So I do just want to point out to you guys, um, I did add a new page with some information about the first forum. We've got some video links up here. Um, this is, I couldn't fit everything on my little screenshot, but there, this um, Q&A and FAQ section is where I've added the comments that came out of the first forum that I had responses to. Um, nobody has used this feature yet. Um, you know, community members asking their own <coughs> questions, uh, but that is a feature that's on there. And then we do have this little quick poll, which I'm trying to remember whether you have to be a registered user to do the quick poll or not. That might be something that anybody can do, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but it is interesting to note that, again, mm. open space and natural resources is definitely the top priority. Um, historic preservation is looking a little weak here. Um, and outdoor recreation also got a lot more support um, in this poll, at least. And I mean, this is only, I think there's like 20 something responses, so. Can you explain why it's so important for people to register? Like, I haven't registered and I've only glanced at it, I have to admit, so I need to yeah. see all of the stuff that it offers. But I, I, I too, am just reticent to, to register for things because then they're tracking you. You know, I told my husband to sign up for next door Watertown, and he's like, I freaking hate that you made me do that because he gets like umpteen emails now. You can call it. About you can call it. You can go in and just say, I want general information. You can call everything else out. I did. So. I, I did it online. Well, there's something to do. Read those things. <laughs> no, but who wants to know? You know, they ask the craziest things. That's the last thing. Don't they? They ask a lot of crazy things. I call it. I just get the things I care about, which is So for this website, they, Bang the Table requires registration for the interactive activities like the map. Um, I believe this quick poll, um, the Q&A, or if we add other, they have other tools that we haven't um, put up on the site yet. But there are other, any time that somebody is commenting or interacting with the site, um, they ask people to register, mostly for the analytics. We can then take that data and you know understand who's responding. Um, we, I think in the registration um, form, we ask what district people live in so we can look at that kind of information. 
think that might be the only question that we asked. I'd have to go back and check. But well, if um, we're not getting it, and we're paying a lot of money for this, we need to recalibrate, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But they also, I think one of the main reasons that Bang, Bang the Table also does their own monitoring of the site, and if there are, I'd have to go back and read like their privacy policies and, and all of that, but part of it too is for them to be able to monitor comments and if there's anything that is out of line, they can then contact that person. Um, but they don't share any of their information, like they won't even share emails with us. Um, so when you sign up, they, you know, your email goes nowhere. Um, and so if I understand you correctly, Avery, they can respond to the survey on this thing. They can see all the links that we have to our videos, to the um, resources that we have, to all that. They may be able or may not be able to participate in that quickie poll. So the only thing that they can't do is move a pin, which nobody's liking anyway very much right now, or leave a comment. At this point, yes. And or, so, or answer the survey. Or, no, they no, can answer the survey, Mark. You don't have to be registered to answer the, the survey. The survey is through SurveyMonkey, so it's just a link to an external source. Yes, they don't have to do that. Um, so but the you real can track clicks, which is also important. Because like, like I have to do things where I'm tracking how many people, the traffic. So mm -hmm. at least we have that metric yep. that you always have at your fingertips. Yep. Yeah, so it's the main reason for, for the registration piece is monitoring the site and then for us to be able to, to analyze and look at it. Well, wouldn't it be good to flip site? it to say we haven't had a problem, why not open it up and if we have a problem, then address the problem? I don't know if Bang the Table will let us do that. I, can, just, I can ask them. Like um, you have monitors on all these Facebook sites, the administrators. Mm -hmm. if, the pro if the things get out of hand, they just say, sorry, we're taking this down. We're not condoning this language, nor these are personal attacks, or blah, blah, blah. So, it, right. you know, it seems to me to, it'd be better to go to the other way to get more participation yeah. on this thing. Yeah, I can double check with them, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's a really solid requirement um, just for the way that they operate the okay. site. We're at 757, yes. just so everybody knows. There's a lot to cover tonight. So this is just a, an overview of some of the map um, information that's come in. These are the kind of a, an overview of some of the comments that, that are associated with each of these little pins. I think half of them are Mark pins, isn't it? <laughs> I, I think half of them are Mark. I was just looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> it's activity. It's activity on the site. That's good. Oh, the, is All right, the color Mark. represent a person? What? No, it's, no, it's the, the different the, themes, the, pins, the different so categories. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. You, can, you can say, I like Mark's idea. You can do something oh. like that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah. incentive to go on there. Yeah, I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I see, was, you can't I, figure it out. No, I was trying to like somebody, and I was just, oh, I got so frustrated. Yeah. Yeah, my phone yeah. started ringing. So. See this little, there's a little, um, like, control yeah. panel on the side. I think that that's where you can add oh, comments see. or likes or yeah. add pins and, and stuff like that. Great. So now I just want to give you an overview of what's coming next. Um, this is our very busy schedule. We are here at this CPC meeting. Um, you'll see that we just had our public forum, um, and we've got focus groups and the second public forum coming up. This is a cleaner, more condensed version of the immediate future. Um, so we have these things that are outlined are things that are coming up um, or currently going on. We've launched the project website, we've launched the survey. Um, we did, Linnea and Elodie and I have been talking over the last few days and we did decide that we are going to extend the survey through the end of April. Originally we were gonna close it at the end of March. Too soon. Um, but we wanna make sure that you know we get as many responses as Just we can. Just give you all a little additional data. I spoke with Leon at the library because the library's been doing a survey about services and what people can use. And she's been running, she ran that survey for almost six months and they were on everything, Instagram, Twitter, videos everywhere. They got about 870 odd responses to that. And they're working, it. she said to me, what are you doing? Because we can we share ideas. So the idea that we would close this survey off at the end of March to me was really premature given that we only have about 240 responses. But this really means, what do we do next, folks? But continue, Avery. <laughs> yep. Um, so the other thing that we did just recently put together is the meeting in the box. 
Um, I don't remember how much you guys have heard about that, but I'll talk about it a little bit more in a second. Um, and then we've got focus groups coming up in mid to late March, mid, mid March. March, and then um, the second public forum in mid April. So focus groups um, will be small group discussions, about 10 people per session. Um, we'll do a short overview and discussion of CPA categories and eligibility, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, we'll do a similar post-it note project ideas and sticker voting exercise, um, similar to what we did in the forum, um, and have a little bit more discussion around that. Um, and then the last thing that we want to do with the focus groups, which uh, we, again, Lene and Elodie and I have been talking about, is um, brainstorming values and guiding principles for application processes. Um, and I can talk about that a little bit more in a second as well. The second um, public before, forum. Before you go on yeah. to the second public forum, um, could we get uh, a list of who's uh, been invited to each focus group session? Okay. Yeah. So we have 37 people confirmed, unless somebody else confirmed today. But I, well, maybe. Oh, five finally you got it under the wire, Lisa. Nice. <laughs> got to shag down our counselors. It's ridiculous. So we have 38 as of today. So the second public forum, which this kind of gets back to what you were talking about, Jason, is um, we're gonna we're thinking that we want to do the open house structure again because it did work so well the first go around, and we are hoping to get the same, if not more, turnout. Um, we want to include a welcome and demographic station, the same that we did, or similar to how we did at the first forum. We want to do the pom pom jar voting activity again, just because you can never get too much data around general CPA priorities. Um, and that's a fun activity. Um, and then instead of doing an idea, project idea generation activity, we're gonna take the ideas that have been generated through the first forum, the focus groups, um, and the survey, and ask people to kind of start prioritizing. Mm -hmm. And this, as I was saying earlier in the night, this is really about getting a sense of the general types of things that people want to see CPA funds support. Um, so we are using concrete examples, but it's really motivating and guiding what eventually will become the goals in the plan. Um, so we're just using concrete examples as a way to kind of get a sense of what people's priorities are. Um, and then we want to take those uh, values and guiding principles that we uh, brainstormed at the focus groups, and we'll do some of that tonight as well. Um, and ask the community to weigh in on those those ideas. Um, which things do they think you know really make sense for the, the application process and for your guys' determination of which projects should be recommended? Um, and I have a question um, on yeah, what you've already said. Um, so you're going to, I mean, you meaning, you know, I guess you and Jen, um, are going to try to abstract from the particular project ideas what the sort of broader principles or you know what uh, you know so stripping away the particular project but sort of what's the, the values behind it mm -hmm. I think it'll be a combination of using this application process these values and principles will give us a sense of, of community values but also taking the project ideas um, is a really great way to get a sense of what the community's goals are um, we often use specific project ideas just because it's really hard for the community to wrap their brain around hypotheticals or abstract ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot easier to use specific project ideas um, and, then, and then kind of use that to help guide the creation of goals. So for example, do you mean that um, from particular project ideas you would get the sense of, okay, these people are all talking about um, open space, um, and they they are prioritizing various open space projects, and so that's what you. Sort yeah, of but it's even more specific than yeah. that. It's getting at um, you know people are really interested in acquiring you know like you were saying acquiring land for passive recreation, or people are really interested in improving and enhancing existing open space or existing recreational assets. Or people are really interested in providing affordable housing specifically for older people or families. 
So it's basically taking gleaning from specific project ideas where the priorities lie. Um, I'm a little amongst concerned. the different. <laughs> um, I think uh, I think we're jumping the gun a little bit on that, and I I would like to see a little bit more education of the public in terms of things like uh, as we if you go to the coalition website, it's how projects qualify mm -hmm. because people are coming to me with a lot of projects that are very pie in the sky and, and don't qualify for CPA funding right. at all. Right. And I think it's uh, this is, should be a little bit more of an educative process because otherwise it comes becomes like a kind of a different regurgitation of what we've already heard. Mm -hmm. um, of, you know, we all know that open space is a high priority, right. so that's one thing, but nobody, I guarantee you people can't tell you what, what an acre of land is going for in Watertown. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you people don't know what an average housing cost is per square foot to build anything. Right. And so I think to just regurgitate that with not offering a little bit more education about historical stuff. Everybody thinks everything is historical. No, there's specific things for sure. that you go through, that you yeah. qualify, and that's register things, and then there are things the town can do. And I think we want people to be a little bit more thoughtful about things. And yeah. I think when we go to prioritization by category, we're way ahead of where we should be. This is my personal opinion, of course. Obviously, I was also the one that brought up the issue about what do we value in our community in terms of what are going to be some guiding principles about how we uh, approach our application process. I'm getting right. tons of questions about right. the application process. Mm -hmm. I'm telling people we are not anywhere close, but uh, I know I personally believe we should have a two-step process, basic format of what are you trying to do so we can tell you does this even qualify? Right. And if not, this is where you might want to go to get money for that project. Um, should we have a thing that we want people to find multiple funding sources? Yep. Should any project hit at least several of our planning documents, even though Can they're I out of date? Right there, just quickly, because I'm going to get to that. Um, going back to the project idea prioritization, we, in the way that we design forums, we use the presentation often as the primary source of education. And you will probably remember that from the first public forum, Jen's presentation was all about eligibility and what qualifies. And so that will have that again, we'll have another presentation and there will be some overlap with the first one because you're obviously gonna get new faces, new people that weren't at the first forum and didn't get that information. Um, but you also don't wanna have it be verbatim the exact same. And the information that people will need might be slightly different based on these um, activities that we're, we're designing. Um, so we will make sure that we talk about what is eligible to the best of our ability. I mean, both myself and Jen, people who work with CPA all the time, it's a nuanced thing and it's, you know, it's not always easy to, if someone brings up an idea to you, it's not always easy to say point blank, yes, that is or isn't eligible. It requires more information, as you were just saying. Um, and so there's no way to have that level of detailed conversation with the public in this kind of setting. Um, and so that's why we ask people to think of ideas, whether or whether whether they are or are not face value eligible. Um, we try to, you know, correct people or or provide that education, which is part of why um, first. I provided that in the, the forum summary. You'll notice that I, I added some asterisks and, and pulled out the things that were, you know, we could say right off the bat these are not eligible or these need more information. We need to know more about it. So, so about the, you know, getting back to the project ideas as distinct from the, from the application process, and I think I agree with a lot of the points you made. Um, uh, my sense is that um, uh, when it comes to, I think, particularly like historic preservation and housing, um, that, uh, uh, and probably maybe to, to a degree, this is true with open space and recreation, but um, that um, you know somebody can say, well, okay, I'd like to, there to be more affordable housing in town, but this is not, you know, it's not a project that some individual is going to come up with. Um, so, in terms of you know ideas for projects um, that you know again sort of lead us toward, uh, okay, what are the you know, what are the priorities? Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's the what's the, the, the plan for getting um, 
organizations or uh, you know, groups of people with capacity to make a project happen to come forward with, at this stage, pre-application, um, with ideas that you know other people can react to as as you know concrete things that they might do. Whether, I mean, you know, for the conservation commission to say, okay, we would like to you know see the town acquire this or that. Um, but again, you know, when it comes to star preservation and the other uh, community housing, um, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, where can those ideas be generated? Yeah, I mean, I think it's not a bad idea to, in outreach for the forum or, you know, the online engagement platforms, whatever it is, definitely encourage anybody that's involved in, you know, town committees um, or other organizations, like getting those people to, to have a voice in it and give their input at this point in the, in the project is a great idea. Um, I think that great ideas could also come from the general public, and maybe it's not someone that is going to take that project forward and apply for CPA funding, but someone else who does have that capacity might see it in the plan or see it in one of these summaries and say, hey, that's a great idea. I want to make that happen. So that's part of where this is all coming from, is it's, it's idea sharing and it's, um, yeah, it's giving a, a baseline uh, sense of, of what people want to see happen in the community, whether or not that person is going to be the one to actually bring it forward or not. Um, but that ends up being like who brings the project forward ends up being the next step after this process. Maria, you have a comment that you want to I had a question and a comment. So um, hopefully you can ask this one briefly. My question is um, so it was never the plan to sort of bring like a draft almost of what we were like I, I didn't realize it was going to be almost a repeat of what we did before I thought it was going to be almost like a rough draft of the plan and like here's where our priorities mm -hmm. are and sort of stuff showing here's the results of the survey here's the results of the first public forum that's what I thought we were doing and we will we will okay. include like preliminary results from the survey and we will share we'll give feedback on what happened at the first forum and we'll, we're basically the idea is that we're taking that information and we're building on it um, so it's after, let me just go back to, so drafting the plan is after the second forum, and then we'll have more meetings, and this is where we're really working together, and we're getting your guys' input um, when we're drafting those goals, okay, and so having a wish to, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have a rough draft, okay. Mm -hmm. Not um, at that forum, no. Okay, and then, um, but there I are public hearings to present it. concern, like, but I, I, you guys are the professionals, and this is not my profession, you know, what you do. So, but I'm a little afraid of, like, having people rank mm -hmm. different project ideas. Like, doesn't that set the expectation that we may somehow be able to make those Correct. wishes come true? We're not, like, the fairy godmother of, you know, yeah. Watertown. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand that. And I think that probably what we will end up doing and what we've done in the past is, um, take specific project ideas and group them or rephrase them to be more generic. So like I was just saying, taking a specific example of, you know, build housing for affordable housing units for this age group. We can, you know, that is something that is pretty generic and we can ask people if that's something that is important to them. Um, mm -hmm. And some things can be specific, like the ponds right. in the Charles River Pass. So, I think in some cases it's okay to be specific, right. but like the north branch that's been abandoned for years, mm. God knows how long. I, I've lived, I've moved a couple times since. Yeah, then. you know, so <laughs> it's like yeah. that is and a that kind of example trigger. might be more like you know adaptively reuse historic buildings that are not in use, or you know, you know, try to if you can. Avery, um, so it's, I, it's I just want to add something because I think you're repeating yourself and I think I want to, uh, we only have yep. so much time. I think it's very important whatever we're going to do here, we're going to have three sets of findings at this point. We're going to have the information we collected from the first public forum. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the survey information yep. and then we're going to have the focus group information. Yes. So we have three pools of information that we should somehow, you should somehow, help co consolidate consolidate in some kind of thoughtful format of these are the key themes that came up under each one of these categories. Yeah. That is meaningful information. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I thought about a blooper thing, like, you know, what's the typical blooper that somebody thinks can be funded, which is totally unfundable, versus mm -hmm. an example of what is fundable, so yeah. that people understand the differences. But that may not be appropriate. This is brainstorming right now. But I think the findings are really critical. Yeah. I think I would like to, uh, uh, my personal thing is given all the input that I'm getting is this application process is a big right. environmental press. We need to address it mm -hmm. to say we're not there yet. Yeah. But these are some of the things we are thinking about, which we can get to certainly before we have that forum. Right. Um, of, you know, we can take a vote. Do we all believe in a two-step process? You know, yes or no. But there's some things there. Do we believe that we want to fund projects that have multi-funding sources would have a higher priority? Do we want projects that do the greatest good for the greatest number of residents? Remember, again, going back to our counselor, this is the people's first. Yeah. And that really sticks in my mind as a critical component of CPC. Yeah. And I think we want to do the greatest good for our community. And there are going to be muni projects that come up. We know that. Mm -hmm. But I think we're, we're going to have to really be very level-headed on how we evaluate these things. And this is a big discussion that we need to have. Mm -hmm. So I don't care what any other community has done, quite frankly. I care about doing the best for my community. Yeah. And I think everybody at the table feels the same way. Yeah. So what may have worked someplace else, with all due respect, may not work here. Yeah. And so no, I, 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 I just that. really want you to understand that yep. and I hope other people will speak to this issue as well. And I hope you guys understand that anything that I just said was trying to clarify. I was really focusing on this idea about progress. Yeah, because I believe she has a comment to Go make. ahead. Well, it, it's uh, kind of what I'm hearing from all, all three and, and in my mind, when you said the uh, project okay. idea prioritization by category, a question, it seems like you know, the first forum, there was a lot of brainstorming and people were mm -hmm. excited about ideas from the public. Mm -hmm. This came, and I might be wrong, this came across when you presented now. Okay, now we're going to start to get a sense to prioritize using, you Those know, ideas. some actual examples. And so, is that a goal? Because I, what I'm hearing and, and personally feeling is a concern around that because we, we're just starting to brainstorm, but mm -hmm. But I don't know Let in the process how you feel about that and, and, and part of my concern about that is this is typically how things are run where you, you have the idea and the assumption is kind of like, okay, here's brainstorming, next one. Because you want to get, because you're trying to narrow down and get to the funding, right. but given that this is a, a different thing and we're in the early stages, mm -hmm. so I, I would just... Yeah, so I'm just gonna, this is a great segue actually. So I want to clarify, I know that one thing that you guys are all really concerned about is talking about specific project ideas that the community is going to think that, oh, I had that idea, I put it on a sticky note, it's going to happen. The CPC will make it happen. They've clarified, we prioritized it, it's, it's going to be something that gets done. And so one thing that we will be very, very careful about in the way that we give the presentation, the way that we present materials at the forum is to get around this idea that we're using specific project examples to get a sense of priorities and, and general ideas about what people want to see CPA funds used for. Okay, that's um, the third bullet clarifies So it. this top quote here is directly from the CPC, or CPA legislation, and this is what the CPC is tasked with doing. This is all part of creating a CPC, or a community preservation plan. Um, is studying the needs, possibilities, and resources. And so possibilities is really project ideas. It's the types of things that CPA could fund. Um, and so that's really where this is coming from. This is why we, we often use these, these types of activities um, and we like to generate project ideas because um, it does give us a sense of, of priorities, um, but it also does give the community some ideas that anybody could come forward with. So that's where that's coming from. Um, so I, I, I don't like to come at these things from a negative perspective, but what I'll say is it's interesting that you highlighted possibilities mm -hmm. because a lot of the things that I heard, the ideas that I heard at my station at the outdoor, um, at the active recreation one, mm -hmm. um, kind of to your point are sort of like very pie in the sky things because to your, what you said before, people don't understand what the cost of land is in Watertown. Right. So they'd be like, you know, buy the Sterrett Lumber property and turn it into, you know, um, open space or recreation or affordable housing. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the fact is, I don't, and I was struggling with how to explain this to people without sounding like Scrooge. Yeah, but like <laughs> we would have to save for like I don't know how many years and not fund a single project. Right. In order to be able to fund, no, we'd have to bond. Like we'd have to go out and bond. Right, and that's not what we did. What did the right. development yeah. pay for? Yeah. Yeah. Six we point can, uh, yeah. two. We can, we can bond. Yeah. Yeah. We, can bond. Yeah. we can't. The town can right. bond. Yeah. So, so we, we would be, can. we so would the be. The revenues which you gave would be used to pay for Would be used to pay the bond on yeah. a yearly basis, yeah. on an annual basis. But that's interesting. But yeah, it's still like I think there's people again. Just people don't understand. Correct. They don't understand the cost of building either. Correct. So we know so, that. So it almost becomes like the impossibility. Yeah. Like, I don't want to like state it that way. Somebody but, said to me the other day, just on this, they said, wow, you know, we really should buy that stair lover side of yeah. Lodeo. What are you doing about it? I said, I'm not doing anything about it. That is not my role uh, as a member of the committee. Yeah. And they said, well, how, how much do you think it's going to be? I said, well, it was 2.7 acres. They bought it for $6.2 million. How much is in the pot for CPA? Uh, I said, $6.2 million. There you go. Just buy it. I said, you don't yeah. even understand People the basics. People are basis. talking a little tight. Okay. Right, right, right. I said, first of all, this is how the pot is broken down. Then there's this. Then there's this. And, and it's like, you know, I'm Scrooge because right. I'm not jumping on this thing. I said, there is an opportunity that should we find a, a, a valid project that we can go out and bond with the permission, and we can't do it, the town would have to agree with yeah, our recommendation, yeah. and we would have to pay that money over 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is. So yes, that's all a possibility, but as to your point, people are highly uneducated about what the structure is, and this is what I was trying to drive at my conversation with you, of mm -hmm. a little bit more educative discussion yep. about what these things mean yep. and how communities use their pool to bond or do different things over time. Mm -hmm. There are communities that have had the CPA in place for 10 years and they haven't done an affordable housing project yep. because they've been saving the money. Thank you. Go so, ahead. Um, I just would, just so we can move on, yes. I would say that we wanted all walks of life to come to this meeting. Right. They intended to get educated. I think it's their role to mm -hmm. help tease out, you know, what's relative and not relative. Because the pie in the sky stuff, I mean, that's why they came. Right. Yeah. So, that's good. Yeah. So it's, it's not that we have to, it's not that we have to really put a whole lot of stock or weight into that. They came to be educated. You know, right. Well, I think this people. committee yeah. now yeah. for this meeting should be a bit more educated. Given that we've gotten ideas from three sources by the time we go here. Yeah. The survey, the meeting, and the focus groups. And these are the key things that came up mm -hmm. that are wants, right. the wants. Uh, let's talk about some of the, the things that go into funding those wants. Just a little reality check. Right. And how this can take time, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I just feel like they can tease out, maybe. They can help us. Yes, yep. right. for sure. And well, we can, we're directing we can be what we need to, for our town. Yeah, yes. we can yes. be yes. sure to, to you know, be communicative with you guys as we're preparing for this forum. and. And double check and come up with you know, we can incorporate some of that into the presentation into our materials so that we're sure that there is education along with these activities. So I do want to keep going because I know that we're over time. Time is flying by. Um, we can talk. So I also this kind of goes back to what we were saying too that you know people will come up with projects they'll they'll say oh I this is a good example. I want to improve Watertown Square, um, Merchants Row upgrade, walking, sitting, hanging out, wall mural, plantings. If there's like a pocket park, sure, that's eligible, I know off the bat. Plantings, probably not. If you can prove that there's some, you know, uh, stormwater mitigation piece oh, oh, oh. or- I did a search of the CPA website, projects with a lot of landscaping in there, so. so. Hmm? I did a search of the CPA project website. Mm -hmm. And if you look at all the town projects, we put in landscaping, mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of projects with landscaping in it. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so. Um, I'm have a park on a land. Yeah. But yeah, so one thing that I'll just point out here is like if there's a historic wall mural, that can be restored or that can be, you know, but, but there are some things like you can't pay to have a new mural painted. That's community or, foundation yeah. project. Right. Yeah. So these kinds of comments. That's where we, we, it's a little bit unclear because we can't just say point blank that's not eligible. We can't say point blank that is eligible. We say we need more information. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just one thing that um, it's important to remember and you know we can continue to communicate to the community. This gets back into the education portion. Exactly. 
Um, so I do want to talk about meeting in a box a little bit. Um, it's basically just a packet of materials that any community, community member can download, print, and use to host their own little DIY meeting. Um, so it's up on the website right now. Um, there's instructions included. Uh, it's basically just a few little activities that people can um, use. They can either bring it to a group that they meet with regularly, whether it's a book club or, um, you know, if they sit on a board or a committee or something, they can bring it to one of their meetings. Um, so it's a great, just a kind of additional, flexible tool for the community to use. Um, and it, like I said, it's on the website, but it will be important to kind of think through how to get the word out about this and how to distribute it. Um, you also all received it in a memo from me mm -hmm. weeks yeah. ago, so you all have it. Yeah. So a little bit about what's coming up and tasks to go along with it. Um, it'll be good for you guys to all think about how do we increase survey responses? Um, how do we outreach for the second forum? How can you guys all help to get the same, if not more, um, number of people there? Um, how do we increase visibility and activity on the project website? We talked about that a little bit. Um, and then, like I was just saying, uh, distri distribution of meeting in a box materials. So these are some ideas. Um, we have done this, the first one, business cards, we've done that before where we print out a bunch of little business cards. They have a link or a QR code, um, either to the project website or the survey or both. Um, and then you guys go out into the community and distribute them at coffee shops, at the library, um, bring them to any sort of meeting or event that you're going to anyway. Um, flyers work the same way. You could do either a flyer or a business card. Um, those both work really well. Um, Olivia has been doing video interviews, which is great. Um, continuing to post those and generate circulation around that, social media posts, um, kind of along with the flyers and business cards going out to, to community events um, or cafes doing tabling, that kind of stuff is really effective. Word of mouth, of course, you guys should all be talking within your own personal networks. Um, send out email blasts to all of your friends, ask them to send email blasts out. It's one of those ripple effect types of things. Um, so I definitely encourage you all to do that. Um, asking different newsletters or listservs if they would be willing to add a little blurb like PTA newsletters or other you know school newsletters, other committees um, or, or organizations that have newsletters that go out regularly. Um, if any of you guys have those connections, I definitely would encourage you to tap into those um, and ask people if they would be willing to just get the word out. Any, any sources is helpful. Um, and then we talked a little bit about, you know, wanting to maybe tap into specific populations, um, younger, younger populations, newer residents. Um, I don't know if you guys have other, other populations of people that you feel like would be good to target, um, but thinking through strat strategies for that. So I'm curious what you guys think about this and if any of you want to commit to, to doing something, I think it'd be really great if each of you could come up with a, a, like a call to action. I commit to handing out X number of flyers. I mean, I'm happy to design the flyers. I can design the business cards. I can order them, send them to a staples for you guys to pick them up. Um, but it'd be really great if you guys could all commit to doing one thing. So I can actually just, in the interest of time, I can come up with a sign-up sheet um, and have Elodie and Lene send that out. Um, for for preparation for the for the forum and for the survey and website outreach, um, and if we could get everyone to commit to doing at least one thing, I think that would be really great. You guys all think that's good? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we I don't know what you mean by a new flyer though. I mean we, we have we had that flyer. Yeah, yeah you can use that flyer. We we're sticking with our one. our yep. designer for our flyers and our materials. Yep. We are not for going sure. down that road again. Um, I just wanted to, you know, make it clear that you guys don't necessarily have to do that on your own. You can, you know, you can use your own person, but um, that's just an idea of something, something to do. So I also wanted to point out we had in our original um, proposal to you guys, we had offered a few additional um, engagement options. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up again since we are in the thick of the outreach portion of this project. Um, if there are any other things that you guys are interested in having us add on to our scope, um, and I can send this out again and you guys can talk about it um, more, but I just wanted to 
to bring that up again, um, just in case you guys are interested. And I know that we talked about doing a paper survey. Um, you have that PDF, and you had talked about having someone volunteer to do the input, which I think is a, a great way to do it. So again, in the interest of time, um, I think that we should just have this be homework. Um, I don't think that we really have time to talk about it here now, but in regards to what Elodie was talking about with um, wanting to have a sense of guiding principles or values around the application process and how you guys are going to weigh applications, um, it would be really helpful if you guys could think through some types of, of values or principles that we can then incorporate into the activities for the forum. Um, so if you could send ideas to Lene by next Friday, that would be very helpful, and then she can pass them on to me. Um, and these are just some examples. I know that Elodie was listing out some of those examples earlier, too. So it's just to give you a sense of the types of, types of things. And nothing, at this point, I will say nothing is a bad idea. If you have an idea, put it out there, and we can discuss it and um, kind of whittle things down as we go. But um, this is just really a brainstorming uh, piece right now. Uh, is this going to be up tomorrow? So we have yes. everything that's yep. already there. I, I can put it all up tomorrow. That's everything I have for you guys for tonight. Yeah. Well, I think when the time comes when we open the doors for business, I don't think we're going to lack for applications right. and ideas. Yeah. Mm. I, I think there's going to be lots of ideas. And the other thing, I mentioned it prior to the first forum, and I'd love to see it again at, at this upcoming forum, is Again, that, that chat that Stuart, Stuart Saginaw produced yeah. that shows what's eligible. So if we could make we can, copies of those yep, and hand them out to everybody, out. Absolutely. It, it'll cut down a lot of questions. I brought it with me to the first forum, but I didn't yeah. have copies. That's a great I that's also a great like tool. Newton's because we could be added a little too. additional information on the back to clarify things, yeah. which amplified a little bit about the basic chart that you're talking yeah. about, Alan. Um, That's they, a great chart. Yeah, but, but if you look at they they gave additional information, which I think we should do too. The more educated yeah. we can be in yeah. this town, the better yeah. off we are. Absolutely. Yeah. I can send it to you. You probably have it. I can yeah. send it to the committee. But I really like what they did with regard to that. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I just want to, even though we're short of time, I just want to repeat something that I said before, which is mm -hmm. with these focus groups and the stakeholders, it seems to me it's very important for. Um, Entities that might want to come forward with a project right. proposal to, uh, you know, to, to expose it to public comment, yeah. um, so that people, you know, get the idea that it's not enough just to say it'd be great to this or great to that, yeah. but um, to react to, you know, real. Yeah, and you're right. The focus groups really, I mean, that is a group of stakeholders and people that you know might be very likely to bring projects forward mm -hmm. to you guys. So yeah. that's a, a great way to generate. Um, you know, project ideas, which is why we do it before the second forum and before we do that, um, those prioritization activities. Alrighty, I'll Great. let you guys move on. All right, let's get on to our minutes. Thank you. Uh, I let my parliamentarian handle all the minutes stuff for me. <laughs> it's delegation and responsibility. <laughs> well, acceptance of the minutes as well. Okay, so if we have the. Uh, well, first is, are there any comments? Yeah, are there any, are there any questions or corrections or. Corrections or comments or corrections on the minutes of January 16th, 2020? No. No? Nope. I'll make a motion to approve um, the January 16th, 2020 minutes as. Second. 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 Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That's done. Okay. Um, well, I think a lot of the things that I've been discussing with um, Avery in the last couple of days have been addressed through our comments and discussion right now for the public forum uh, two. And that's going to be here before we know it. Um, we, a, uh, Lene and I worked really hard to get a balance in all the meetings for the focus groups. Um, so we have pretty decent representation, both from some private entities in town, just to give you an idea. We, um, let me see where my list is right here. So much paper. Um, so we got people from the Historical Commission, the Library, the Housing Authority, ConCom, Trees for Watertown, Bike Ped,
Community Foundation, Planning Board, Council, Community Gardens, uh, Historic District Commission, um, the Historical Commission, different things, the uh, Zoning Board, Town Council again, Planning Board, Town Council again, Camp Quasset, um, Bike Head Committee again, let's see what else, uh, Trees for Watertown, ConCom Stormwater Advisory, Director of Recreation, McCamp Commander's Mansion, Zoning and Code Enforcement, Counselors, Planning and Development, Senior Center, Metro West Collaborative, Boys and Girls Club, Department of Public Works, and the Armenian Museum. Some people we reached out to. Did we did we get somebody from the Mount Albert Cemetery, Lene? Because you updated one more time yes. after we did. Okay, we did not hear back from the Gore Estate, and there were some people that we did not hear back. I reached out multiple times to Dan uh, Driscoll with regard to um, uh, Department DCR, excuse me, and no no response. But we really have beaten the bushes down to really make sure that it was very balanced of, and tried to create balance within these groups so that there would be equal representation of all voices, just so you know. Yeah. So I think that's in good shape, and we're up to 38 people right now. So Question? Okay. Okay, sure. Um, so when we last we met as, as this group, because we've had the public forum since then, um, it wasn't clear whether each meeting was going to be focused on one particular No, it's area. a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. It's also important to have a mixed bag because people hear the needs from the other constituencies. Sure. Because it's easy to think it's all about me and what I want. Mm. And what's very important here is, you know, this is a, it's not a huge pool of money. And how do we balance out the needs of the community and that people, well, some of these people don't even know each other. So, that, you know, this is also, again, another effort for connectivity between all these people to understand <coughs> the needs in the community and, and know a little bit about each other. Okay. So I, just, I know Lene wasn't even sure the last time like which way it was going. Um, but yeah, so we, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. Can, how do, can we get a little information on what, what the yes. attendance or, you know, are we invited or is it just... Is you can, it, we, we anybody can go, but you are not there to participate. You're there as an observer. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be in this room. I'm debating whether I can turn the whole table to, to make it a little bit better for, because um, the max we have is 10 people in a group, okay. unless a few more counselors straggle in at the last minute. But no, we, any anybody is a, a, welcome to come. We did not advertise this publicly. We don't have to because this is a, a, a our consultant's exercise. But of course you can come. It's just we're not participating in this. Gotcha. We're here just to listen. I would just love to listen. see what the attend, you know, what each right. group is and how the breakdown of different yeah. people so are, or if we can get a report back What I was going it. to say there is There will be a report. Also, we'll put together a report afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> what I was going to say is that John requested who we invited, so yeah. I was going to, I'll distribute a list of who we invited, and then I can send a list of the Great. confirmations, and you can Great. see yeah. who's no, represented. That would be, yeah, that, that's all I yeah. Thank and you. And it's facilitated by either Jen or Avery. Uh, both you and Jen. You're doing it solo, Avery, I, or with Jen? I believe it will be just me. Okay. Um, I'm not trapped on the end. I believe it's just me. Uh, but yeah, I do want to reiterate that we will put together a, a summary of each oh, okay. session the way that we did with the form. Okay. And we'll just that. Are you, Olivia, planning to go to each one of them? Absolutely. I thought so. Mm -hmm. But are you an observer? I'm like, an observer. Okay. Just like anybody else there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, so um, I, you know, trying to think if there's anything else, and you know we're updated to the money, we're about 6.2 million. Uh, I, I sent that information out to you as well. So we're pretty much up to speed on everything that we have to do. The only other thing I want to bring up is uh, with regard to marketing for the next time around for the second public forum. Clearly we have a little problem in this town and that businesses are not particularly supportive of putting some things up. And I think Dennis probably had the best luck of anybody going into small businesses in town. Um, John put up a lot of flyers up at the bus stops that were ripped down almost immediately, although I did hear that one. Did you put one up in Waverly Station? Yes. Because somebody said to me, oh, Laudia, I'm so excited. I saw one of your flyers in Waverly Station, but I missed the forum. Okay. <laughs> I said, lucky you, there's another one coming up on April 16th. So give me your name right now, and I will ball and chain you to get there. So um, in, in thinking again, Bob was phenomenal. He called me up after the, the first forum that we did, and he goes, what can I do to help? You know, what ideas, what, what do you got cooking there so that we can drive some better attendance? 
And I said, well, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about sandwich boards. I said, could you find some information out for me? So we have some big sandwich boards, they which are about... Uh, they go in front of the building. The Leo, floor. can I finish my presentation, yes. my darling friend? Mm -hmm. Okay, which are three, three by four? Four, four, by four, four. four by four. Fairly substantive. If you're going down um, Mount Auburn Street, you'll see one right by Sullivan Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those are fairly huge. We have five of those. And Bob knows all the locations. I don't know if anybody is still having a windmill death file problem, but apparently it's going through the entire town now mm -hmm. that many of us cannot receive Lene's emails and see the PDF. I've sent it to everybody. It's totally crazy making. It's not just me. It's counselors. It's people on other commissions. Anyway, we have five of those. Um, they're fair, they were fair, we've been pricing of what it costs to wrap our, our thing around it. And it has to be big and bold. So, it, you know, Lene and I have been talking a little bit, and Bob, it would be our, our big logo, and then, you know, public date. forum number two, where it is, the date, the time, and where it's located, because it's a drive-by. Then Bob also let us know that he has some smaller sandwich boards that are that are um, two, two, by by, two by three, and he's got a bunch of those, so we can have a party. Um, these we could use at all our parks because our weather is getting better, more people are going out, and so those we could wrap and have like at both ends of Vic or at both ends of Filipello, um, the kitty park. Because you know I are, ran around attaching everything to trash cans with Bruce to try to uh, you know put them in public spaces for our first one. So I I think the sandwich board is a great way to go. We still have to do electronic blasts again, like we did with our flyer. I, you know, to have all our things ripped down at the bus stations is not so hot. And then it's really talking about locations of where we want to put them. Bob got some initial pricing for us. Um, then Lene did some um, also pricing with Staples and another organization. And I said, do me a favor, call this, get in touch with Vistaprint, because I've used them for lots of professional marketing things. And the prices were a, a lot lower. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, because I couldn't open the freaking email. Um, I believe the big boards were $65 a side. That's kind of expensive for a one-off. You know, then we should buy our own and just have a, our logo printed on it so we could use it forevermore. The smaller ones were originally, Lene, about 40. Could you? Just so refer? you're talking about the posters for the small for the small yeah. boards, just so the different staples. prices we got. You can get a laminated 18 by 24 inch poster for uh, 1839, and then Vistaprint, they're 14 dollars. Yeah, Vistaprint is really good. I've used yeah. them for so many things: business cards, T-shirts, caps. If anybody joins us next year, doing front of the square, I've got a lot of ideas, of course. But in the meantime, um, you know, just this, I'm just putting this out there because uh, we have, the boards are available as of. March 3rd. March 3rd, so that because, is right uh, around the corner. They're voting. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're voting uh, signs. Vote for CPC. <laughs> um, Bob is also we'll leave them out there. And that we'll have them all the way through. And then Whatever. Bob is also kind enough to look into the electric signs that are available. There's some of those. But they're really, um, they're a little bit tougher because you can only do almost one word per line and it's yes. what seven seven letters per word three <laughs> lines to come nine to letters. cpa or die yeah, exactly. you know? <laughs> it's very chopped up yeah. it's very choppy mm -hmm. so, so we kind of kicked it around i'm just putting everything out on the table we kicked it around it didn't seem to make much sense for us but the sandwich boards i mean when I think about it, the small ones could easily go front and back of the library. Lots of traffic going in yeah, and out. The library is a must. For must the thing. Board. Big one. When you're in the traffic jam of our wonderful square, obviously um, the parks are critical for the small ones. But would you just be kind enough, Bob, to review the five locations that you use? For the four use? by four sites, uh, Knowles Delta. Oh, I love him. He Does everybody know Knowles Delta? Mm -hmm. Lexington and Belmont Street. Right. Mm -hmm. Watertown Square mm -hmm. Delta. Uh, Town Hall. Mm -hmm. Arsenal Street. It can be kind of it's down more towards the uh, residence hotel on Arsenal right, Street now, in, the, yeah, in right. the middle. The hotel, I mean, Arsenal yeah. Yards, and the then uh, Mount Auburn and Arsenal Street or yeah. Sullivan Park. So, That's where the big ones are. Mm -hmm. And then you know we've talked about all the parks. The dog parks are huge. Right. Mount Park and Filipello Dog Park. Right. Probably used too. And we also have uh, one, uh, there's also another dog park, it's private property, but yeah, in the it's Bell, over Bell Complex. Yeah, Bell, Bell, Bell Watertown, yeah. So, there'll be another one. And then all of our parks, 
meaning mm -hmm. on playgrounds. Right. Victory could have a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How about uh, the Boys and Girls Club? I didn't put that down. Well, that's here. we could cover that through Salt and Stall and also the Boys and Girls yeah. Club. But yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I didn't put any of the bus stops because I thought they might get nah. vandalized. They're not big, and, and the, they might get. They might Are you concerned alive. at all about money or anything on the price? We have money. No, we, we have money yeah. to be able to do this. It's just um, I'm always penny pinching because I was going to say you can make you can make these prints yourself, and I have access to a big laminator. Mm -hmm. How big is your laminator? Is it will it do 18 by 24? Mm -hmm. <gasps> can it do oh. bigger? Yeah, but I shouldn't say it in the camera rolling. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, can you edit that up? <laughs> Pay attention, Sam. So, but if you, but we can talk offline. Yes. Well, the okay. thing is, we have to, we have to figure out who would be printing it, the lamination for the the smaller ones, the big, the big size, as I understand it, are a. Take, banner. There, it's kind of like a vinyl banner right. that wraps. That's why oh, it's so expensive. And no, I know, but we want to know how big can you go, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then I'm not sure how large Vista Print can go up to for the same thing that we were looking at. Because Lene just found that out today. They could do, they can do two by three, but it's more money. And I thought, is it really worthwhile to go? Up a few inches so, all the way around. I'm pretty I don't sure think it we matters. do two by three because this is oh, what do. we do where I work okay. all the time. <laughs> is we just make them all and so the oh. big cost then, just to talk about it openly, would be for the four by four ones. Um, where's your list, Bob? Can I borrow that back for a second? Would be for the four by four, and you know, it, even if we did only one, because we could use small ones a lot of other places. But to me, the delta has to have. That, that's the most critical point, having stood out there for umpteen political campaigns and everything else. The well, Delta. I've never seen one. Oh, because you're never there. That's why. I'm never there <laughs> um, so the Watertown Delta, the one that I saw by Arlington Street, I almost caught it out of the corner of my eye because it was it was all red, so it just kind of blended in. It didn't pop like our <laughs> wonderful stuff pops. So the real question is, um, for five of the big ones at $65 a side times 130, we're talking about 600 and change. It gets a little costly. The smaller ones we could do because we have a, a benefactor. And then we, we, <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> and then we, need, we need to print and laminate. So any thoughts what I might, to Yeah, what I might want to do is just buy the laminating material and then just use their laminator. Mm -hmm. So, but, but we can talk about that. Because you can't laminate as big as that, no. can you? Your hair no. laminator is bigger than no. your laminator. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, well, the other thing is we could just limit the number. We don't have to do five of the yeah, yeah. Of the big banners. boards. We could do two. I mean, we could yeah. just find the most visible so, places. Yeah. You know, as you're, that you makes know, sense. I'd like you to really think yeah. about this. And if you have an opinion, then get back to as soon as possible so we can put it into operation. Because we also have to get, you know. Change this. We have to change this as the electronic advertisement for mm -hmm. our next forum. But then um, I'd probably ask Marcia, Marcia to do something different for, because you're not going to be able to read all this. It's just going to be, you know, logo, where it's, what's going on, when it's happening, time, etc. And can come, come and have fun and learn something kind of stuff. So that's my wrap up on there. And so now we're on to the event of the evening of election of a chair. Hey, so. Sure. I don't know if you guys, if, if it's easy with the election, you know, people are early voting, but if you have even a static flyer or something, um, you know, at the polls, mm -hmm. if you want people to see, or, or you know. Yeah. I don't, know if you're, I don't think numbers. you're allowed to do that in yeah, the polling places. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, as, as, as you're entering the polls, the clerk's office, whatever, it's just a suggestion we thought. There's, we already have over a thousand people who voted. But. Well, I know there's a lot of issues that I'm putting anything on a bulletin board in town hall because they're own, all owned by specific entities. And I really don't think you're allowed to do anything in the polling places, I understand it. Definitely. And I don't know how many people I mean, are it's just, a, it's just a media advertising media, right? But. Yeah, but I mean, we are one week away. And yeah, you might not be ready. I don't, we're not ready. I, you know, I still have to get something designed and all yeah. that kind of okay. stuff to work that out. So. Um, I think that, so those are all my highlights of what I had to bring up of where we are. I've covered everything, meeting box. What, what, do you have a total cost of all the signage? 
Uh, I just said 600 and something. Well, the five yeah. big ones would be The five big ones are 130 times. Well, no, we can get the big ones at Vistaprint for 40, for 44 and change. And how, so how big are those? Bucks. Those are four by four. Four by four, so okay, so that drops you quite a bit. Right. That's a good price. Why, 44 why each we, side. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Do we have yeah. to wait and vote on it or? Well, if you all agree to that, then we'll have Make to get a, a design we spend money for the five lines. So we have five large ones and so whatever be, expenses one, Maria yeah. incurs for the small ones. So that'd be four forty for the large, you know, forty four dollars a side because it's two sides. So that's for five signs, and then uh, for the we have Bob. Do you remember you said eleven, twelve of the small ones? How many do you have? Oh, we can. Unlimited. Right. I mean, I have a lot of them. Fifty. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, know, I thought we were talking like 10 or something. Yeah, we'll yeah, see yeah. what I can do. Five. Just, well, 10 will be. But no, we, but we need both sides. Do oh, you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, you have to yeah, see yeah. it from both angles. Okay. So we shall have an oh, offline conversation. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because maybe All right. we figure something out. All right. Yeah, so, so, right. We, we, can, we can do this uh, if, if everybody's in agreement. But I was trying to come up with something that could go quickly. Thank you, Dennis. Would you make the motion, please? He yeah, did. He did. Sorry, I missed it. I apologize. Somebody needs to I say. I made a motion that we spend the money for the five large signs, and I believe it was four hundred something. Did you say four forty? Four hundred and forty dollars. And any necessary expenses for Maria and her sign making. Okay. Well, and we'll get some pricing on that. We have to figure out how many we're going to do. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. Great. Just keep it under six point two million. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. Should be a problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I know we're running a little bit late, but we're at eight fifty one. Yeah. So now here we are. Um, for um, I'm going to give it back to my parliamentarian. He does this so much better. Oh no. Yeah. And we're just following the uh, the order of business of the agenda. The CPC right. chair election. So if if she would accept, I would uh, graciously uh, nominate Elodia to be chairperson for an additional year. Second the motion. A third. <laughs> if there's anyone else. Who'll... Yeah. Sure. The floor is open for nominations. <laughs> Crickets. And will we close the nomination? Second. Do we agree? Oh, we agree. Okay, we agree on that. So motions have been opened. Motion uh, 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 been made. nomination has been made. Mm -hmm. It's been seconded. And third. The floor has been closed. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I, think uh, I said if you accept. I, yeah, I know. You did a very nice <laughs> job on that, Alan. Um, as you know, I've, I've not been very happy about how things have been going with this committee. I've been over backwards to try to draw people in to engage them. I, I've never had the phone ring towards my house, uh, I can tell you, except by one, two, three people on this committee asking questions, seeing how they can help, what they can do. Um, this has been an inordinate amount of work and I don't think anybody here realizes how much work I put into this because Lene works 20 hours a week and she's done for the week and I'm filling everything else in and addressing every other issue that goes on and there's a lot of work and it's just I'm not used to working I, I, I'm gonna put this uh, I went to a recent Peter Pete Buddha judge meeting and I was in last night at a meeting for a, a group in the community that is looking to organize something and hoping they can get CPC money and just asked if I would come and listen. And I think it's very tenuous whether they could or not, but that was not my point to be there. I was just there to listen. But what really hit me about both groups that I went to is the passion that everybody had for the project that they were working on and, and what they're trying to do and how they communicate with each other. And uh, I love meetings that start on time, as you know. I try to stick to the schedule because I'm respectful of everybody's time. I try to communicate as best I can with everything that's going on. And I don't know how to do a better job at this, quite frankly. And I, given what I'm getting back from this group, because um, I don't want to say, well, this one's my favorite or anything like that, I think you probably would be happier with somebody else's chair. That is my perception, given what I'm getting. And I made a joke to one person saying, I, I could have my whole committee sign a contract with me of these are my expectations or my rules of the road 
because I, I'm a fierce worker, as you all know. I'm, I'm, I work really hard. Um, I know that some there's been a shadow process going on. Believe me, when you're commenting about me behind my back, it all comes back to me. Um, that's just, you know, it's just the way it is. And it, it's, it's, it's really untenable for someone like me to work like that. I, I never, I've never encountered this before in all my years of working in any situation. So I, I really, I, I think, I would say that you're nominating me more because nobody else wants to do the job. And, and that's not a really good feeling for someone like me. I disagree with you a thousand percent. Well, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not seconding a nomination because I think no one else wants a job. No one can do this job better than you. You've proven that. And I will publicly apologize if I have not done enough. Well, I appreciate the apology, Dennis, but the fact is that there's such a long road to go here. And I, 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 it's not about apologies. I just want to know how do I get people to kick in? I mean, I'm, I'm a joyful person. I like to have a good time. And um, I'll work hard, and I feel that we need to work together. And I, I don't seem to be able to bring that out in this group. It's partially me. Maybe it's my personality. I own it. Um, somebody said, well, you are a bit of a perfectionist, Elodia. Well, I don't see it that way. I just have a very high standard for what I expect of the consultant, what I expect of myself, and what I expect of you. And I won't even go into the details of the cluster that I've been dealing with with the town, which is exhausting. And it's basically me dealing with every single thing, one, because I have enough muscle to try to deal with it with certain people. But this is hard, and I feel very alone in the struggle. And it's not a good feeling, you know. Can I, can I sure, offer Jason. a thought? Sure. Know, it is not my business to make any suggestion no, and of on course how it's to your prioritize business. your various endeavors. But would it be easier for you if the CPC was the your main focus and the one thing you did and, and all these other things weren't just kind of piling on to the stress that you're like Such I'm fun. saying this and I, I'm not even I shouldn't even be saying this. I'm not. It's not my place to, to make it. Well, well, I, I know. I'm, I'm curious as to what else you think are my stressors. I, I mean, you have an opinion, so something's feeding your your yeah, your well, comment. We've had conversations about all the various things that you do for the town and the various movements and organizations and things that you're involved with. And it just seems to me that those are stressors as much as the CPC is. Oh no no. <laughs> the the biotech regulation is ended, that, okay. that's done. Um, still working on dark sky sliding with the town because that's been another interesting issue coming up. Uh, the noise ordinance is essentially almost done now it's in the hands of the town attorney. I don't know how that would turn out and it was poorly handled by two committees. They should have gone out, hired a consultant to do certain things and it would have been better. But you know these are things that I care to improve my community. The things that I'm most concerned about is one, anything to do with our natural environment, anything that makes quality of life better in our community. And this is not just for me, it's for posterity. Um, the schools are another big issue, that we are not overbuilding, that we're not doing this, Hank, you all got my memo, I'm sure, because you're all on my mailing list. The idea that they would be taking green space away from Victory Field is completely preposterous to me, given what we have in this town. So that is something that I'm going to be engaged with. Now, what's the difference between you having a family and having a job and me having my, my concerns that I'm willing to act for? We have nine people on this committee. Okay. This nine is, people. This is going... No, I'm just being no, honest. No, Let's no, have an open conversation. Not, I, I didn't want it to go down this road because it sounds like it's personal right now. My, my no. family is not a choice that I make. <laughs> well, but, I, I, can't, I can't decide tomorrow that I'm going to prioritize my CPC involvement over my family. Of course not. I'm not saying that, but you have things that take up time in your life. Yeah. I have Bruce. I have right. the things that I work on. I, we all have a social, personal life, whatever it is. Right. We all have different things that we give our energies to. All I'm saying is look deep in your hearts and say, where have you contributed in the last 10 months of really trying to be passionate or, or move the ball forward what have you done? I have never put anybody on the spot here, but we just listened to Avery talk about what is everybody going to do to market and to push this for the second forum. 
what did you all do? Nobody wants to tell me what they did. I know what I did. I can clearly articulate every blip in that map of what's been going on. But I'm not getting, I send you out follow-up information to push it forward. I don't get so much as a notice, thank you, Elodia, or I'm going to use it for this. That I'm just always sending things into the abyss. Okay, from where I am raised and the way I've worked in business or education or anywhere else, that's simply not even good manners. But it's like, am I annoying you with the follow-up? Am I annoying, with you, annoying you to say these are next steps that we need to push? Because it can't be a one-woman band. It, this is simply not going to be successful. And that's the way I see it right now. You can feel free to critique me or give me any feedback you want. But this is really serious stuff for me because we... I don't think any of us disagree with that. I'm just, but nobody's feel, doing anything, Jason. I disagree with well, that. Can I, can I ask a question? I mean, why... What, what, what motivates you to say that nobody else is doing anything on this? Tell me what you're doing. Share it. Please share it with us. I'd like to hear everybody share what they're doing. I'd love to hear it. Well, I mean, I have a problem with this. Um, it, it seems to me that, um, you know, and this is an example, and forgive me if this sounds personal, but where you ask for feedback and somebody offers feedback, and then um, there is a lot of pushback, um, which does not encourage the rest of us to uh, speak up. Um, I was wondering about, um, at one point, we talked about um, having subcommittees um, and delegating certain tasks to subcommittees. Um, it seems to me that that is a possibility that could um, lighten your load uh, and where the subcommittee became responsible for something. Now, you might not like the way the subcommittee handles its, you know, its assigned tasks, but I think that's part of life on a committee. So how I've never heard anybody volunteer to say, I think we should have a committee, subcommittee on this and this, what? and these people would be I willing to work differ. on it. No. Mark and I volunteered at a meeting you were not at. Yes, that that's Bob right. That chaired. And it was very disappointing to both Mark and I that we were stripped of our role of that we were going to review the survey questionnaire and bring back our results of what we felt were the res what what and we spent a good bit of time doing that but you had other ideas no maria i got an email from you that mark gave me the most constructive feedback mark did you read his feedback and you said i can't spend any more time on this just go with Mark, what Mark has done, and hear my remarks. You never reached out to John. You never reached out to anybody else on the committee. So how did all their remarks get incorporated into That's this? That's the difference. When you, when you build a subcommittee, the two of us worked together. I agreed with all of his and added a little bit more. And then we were planning to present to the committee as a whole, because that's what you do when you have a subcommittee. A subgroup evaluates it together. I agreed with whatever he had already done and added a little bit more to it. And we weren't trying to funnel through you, but you wanted that control. Our plan was to then share those results at the next meeting, but you had other ideas. So we felt like that, was, that role was taken away from us. We offered to do that task, and you didn't agree with our approach. I didn't so, not, I said, why didn't you include everybody else? Because I still had four other but people. But that's the way a subcommittee works. That's, you, in order, you can't, we cannot, we will be here evaluating every nuance. Like tonight, it got, like, we, we just went in the weeds too much. And it's fun. Some of it's fun to talk, talk and banter, and, and, it, and it's good, you know. But it can get to be too much, and we can't get everything done. That's why you put like subtasks to different small groups and you can get much more accomplished and then you know I mean that's how big city councils work you just have to do it and I, I have to agree with the perfectionist comment and that's coming from a fellow perfectionist I have had have bosses tell me Maria 95% is good enough you are an absolute perfectionist and it's a blessing but sometimes it can drive other people crazy I drive people crazy too I really do and I've had people had to tell me that you know what this is just too much or I'm too controlling over things so we do need to have it's taken me a long time to learn those things and I just feel like we need to take a, a different approach I would consider being chair but the part the, the thing that scares me the most Elodia is it wouldn't be done to your level and your expectations your expectations are here 
and the rest of us are, are okay with maybe at like 85, 90%. It, everything doesn't have to be at 98 to 100% all the time because we all have other things we're doing. And that's just that's just the reality. As do of I, it. Maria. I, As do I, I, I know. Do you, I know. But I'm just saying. Ask you a question? Am I not saying? Am I not? Am I? Ta am I? Does, do, does anybody? No. Have? I, I, I look. I, I'm with you. And and I, 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 a little while ago, I don't know, eight to ten years ago, I had an epiphany from talking to a boss of mine about the idea of good enough. And what is the level below which something becomes dysfunctional? Then you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. But in that range between good enough and perfection, there's some level that most people will be comfortable with, I think, that will get the job done without going absolutely crazy. And I, I, I sympathize with you. I, I, we've had these conversations. I know how stressful it is. And I probably should have mentioned this to you when we talked of some of the times, but I just I held it back because I didn't want to say, like, you know, well, have you ever thought about, like, how far down you could ratchet it and still be proud of the work that you do but not drive yourself crazy. I but it's not my role, it's, it's, it's not okay. my job no, to tell you. It's fine that. what you're saying, J Jason, but do you but, understand that when I've asked for a deadline, that nobody has ever met the deadline? The only person that's met the deadline on, on certain issues is Mark and Dennis. That's it, out of everybody on this committee. But the deadline is being... I've met many deadlines. No, John, you go on with alteration after alteration I, I, and I, I change after change. Day. Please, Lene, back me up on this one. I, can, I, can I respond to what you're saying? Of course you can, John. Okay. Well, so on the, on the survey, after the deadline, I send you an email, and I said, I know it's after the deadline, mm -hmm. and if you'll consider these, fine. And if not, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And somehow, that became a big problem for you. It was As if, a couple of times after the deadline. Well, and, and so you could have chosen to say, I'm sorry, it's after the deadline. Thanks very much for your effort, but it's too late. But and, it's and not just you, John. That's my point. I'm not trying to pick on you. There are other people that well, are doing the I same didn't think thing. You were. I just you made a, a broad It's just very hard to work with that. I, I'm okay. just sorry. I, well, and you know, we're all we're all appointed to this committee. We've all got individual responsibility because mm -hmm. we've been appointed to this committee. Mm -hmm. And if we fail to live up to our responsibilities, we have to bear the consequences. Mm -hmm. Now, things may not be done as this discussion about perfection. I don't know about perfection, but there's also the way that a certain person wants them done. I mean, I have, I have my views about how I want something done, but it doesn't always work out that way, especially when I'm on, on a committee. And so there's the, the need to sort of accept that my way is not the only way, and what I might see as the, the necessary level of uh, I don't know, you want to call it profession or whatever, um, you know, somebody else might see it differently and have to take the responsibility for doing things the way they do them. Maybe I'm talking too abstractly, but you know, if we do have committees, if we do break this down, and if the, if the committee doesn't, if the people on that committee don't live up to their responsibilities, then you know, that's gonna come to light in this meeting and we'll have to live with that and we'll have to deal with, okay, so how do we fulfill our responsibilities to the public and, you know, and get that work done? Um, and it's not, everything is not, you know, a personal, um, you know, a failure or refusal of, of the people involved. You know, there are, there are reasons that people do things differently. And I think we just ought to be able to accept that we, that we work that way. I think we all work differently, but to me, when we are trying to move a project forward, we have to say, okay, not one person reached out to me after the, the, we did the forum and said, should we be, what are we doing next? What should we be doing? I, I, I think that's what these meetings are for, are they not? But that's too much time, Jason. We've had almost a month go by since the public forum. Realize, a whole month. That's a huge loss of time and energy, and they wanted to close down the survey at the end of March. I don't think we have enough data. I said okay. this would be a bad thing to do. And we decided to extend the survey. Yes. Yes, because I've been going through where are all the hiccups that, that I see coming ahead. I have a lot of sales and marketing experience. I have a lot of administration experience. I've worked in a lot of different areas. 
you know, I, all these things fire for me of trying to put together a really good project. We all know how contentious the CPA was in town. We all know how contentious it was to make the appointments. There's a lot riding on this for our community that we can instill some pride of place. There are a lot of layers to it. And so that's where I come from. I've been completely transparent with all of you about my views, how I process things, what I do. I have tried to meet with everybody for coffee, a glass of wine, to get to know people, what do they like to do, what, are, what, what, what scratches their itch, because it doesn't help to try to get people to do something they're not comfortable with. I, ca I can't figure it out with all of you. I'm being honest. I just have missed the boat here, and I'll own that. I really can't figure it out. And so, you know, I feel that it's time. I, I, I view phase one as a serious startup. Startups are extremely difficult. You have to, there's all these hiccups that come up constantly, and we certainly had plenty of them. We had difficulties with the consultant. We've had difficulties with the town. I tried to address them all. We, I think we saw the first flyer was terrible. We saw the, 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 the survey had kind of been patched together. We straightened it out. I mean, did I want to spend five hours just before Christmas with Lene, still incorporating comments from people because I was trying to bend over backwards to let everybody have their say? Really, I am still getting comments on things that were on the resource sheets. And one Saturday, I got 10 comments to change everything after we've already had this. We can change things down the road before we go to publish our plan. But when I said to this person, just hold it. You know, we, we're, we're already out there. We will work this through later, but to be bombarded like that is, is just insanity. It really so, is. But if we go back a couple of months sure. and, and we all agreed, or if we had had a vote on the idea of creating subcommittees and delegating responsibilities for all of these various things you're talking about to different subcommittees of people or even individuals. Well, we only did it once. That, yeah. for the survey. I, I mean, I just got the sense that, that the subcommittee idea was not, it wasn't going to fly, or it was it was shot down somehow. I certainly I, didn't shoot it down. Well, I don't know. It, it just seemed to me that, that there was a reticence to give up, to, to not have all issues vetted and discussed by the entire group. I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying there. I'm sorry. I guess what I'm saying is, it's not. This is not a one-person show. No, it's not. And, and it seems like you feel like you've been picking up the slack that everyone else has sort of been pushing off and just sort of like wiping their hands off. But I think there's another way to, of looking at it is that maybe to Maria's point earlier is that if you want to have your imprint on everything or a say on everything and not trust individuals or smaller subcommittees to take care of things, it's going to be extremely stressful for the chair. And I may be alone in my in no, saying this, no, no, I don't you're, know. But you're entitled to this opinion. All I, all, let's just go back to the survey thing. I was in Vietnam, so I didn't know what was going on. Two people took it on. Any place that I've worked, and this is my experience, okay, a subcommittee is formed, you send your info to the subcommittee, and they collate everything, put it together, give you clean copy, and this is done. This is how I've worked. We got lots of notes from people, um, not, a, not a completely redone survey or edited survey, and then still continue to get comments after that was sent out, and more comments, and more comments, and still got comments even later on. There's a certain point that I'm thinking, okay, I wasn't here to say, well, how's the subcommittee gonna work? How are you going to get everything? Because um, that seems only natural that other people have had comments that you would look at their comments and incorporate them with yours. That's how I would normally think subcommittees would work. It didn't go down that way. And I just said, I'm in the dark. Could you please enlighten me? Did you gather information from everybody else so that you're going to compile everything? We did not get a compilation of everything so when we finally got I'd it. I'd have to go back and look at the notes, but I believe Bob had suggested, and we'd have to look at the meeting notes and... and Lene was there, it was told, anyone had any comments to send it to us. If they didn't, that's right. the way it works. If they don't, if people don't send the comments, then you, you present them, maybe you give one more final opportunity, but in that interim, when you got back, you, t you didn't like the way it was going. That's comments had gone to Goldson, Maria. You and Mark did stuff. Comments had gone someplace else. It was all over the map. 
I, can, I can't work all over the map, I'll be honest with that. I need, if you're in charge, everybody is, gets sent to you, you and well, Mark work it out. Do me a favor, do me a favor. Either, either decline being chair completely, oh. and we'll have to discern it here now, or give it a try. Give it a try and trust that a small group of us can take on the task and see it through fruition the way that th that particular group of people want to tackle it. And trust me, it's hard. I, I am very much like you, Elodia. I don't like to give up control, but sometimes you just have to. You have to let other people take it to a certain step, and then we can weigh in at a final step. But hopefully, we get to like we were with the meetings, to the minutes tonight. You did a fabulous job. They should just be boom, boom, boom all the time. And that's how it should be. You know, you vet it by a trusted group of colleagues, and then it's boom, we move on. So that we don't have to hash out every little nuance of everything, because it will just drive us all crazy. Um, do you know how much backstabbing has gone about me being on this committee, Maria, and the fact that I supported schools first, and the fact that our get it, get it. Yeah, I'm over it, but it's still it. going on. It is still going on, and I find come it really on. distasteful. Everybody comes to you. Everybody, you tell you tell us all these people are coming to you. You are Miss CPA. No, cut, I cut, I'm cut the shit. To my cut community. the crap that people are saying they're backstabbing you. You are Miss CPA. No, you I'm are not. like like we should get you a banner. There's no way that people are talking ill about you. I don't believe it. That you know, as far as that why you're on this group, you have more than, as Dennis has said, more than proven your worth in gold. You, ha it's just that it's hard to live up to the expectations that you have. That's all I'm saying is give it a try. And that's fine. No, give that's it a try. Fine, and another thing that would help is that sometimes, and maybe it's me, because I'm very busy, and, and I could have missed a deadline. But you have to like put it in the email. The deadline is blah, blah, blah. Like I have to write down, Avery said, uh, a week from Friday. I'm like, well, what day is that? You know, I'm, you know, and we should have a follow-up. That should be a follow-up email from Lene or somebody. If you want, what are your potential values and guiding principles, blah, blah, blah. You need to send that. The committee needs to send these responses to Lene by the state. Because we're tired. You know, some of us have worked all day, had to deal with kids or whatever. We need reminders. So yeah. reminders are helpful. It's not that people are flaking out. Like, I'm sure I flaked out. I apologize. But people do. People are busy. People need like, here's here's short, sweet. This is what you got to do by when. This is the expectation. Right. Do you realize? Please do realize that Lene didn't come on until December. 9th. I agree. And this was chaos and like yeoman's work that you did. Absolutely. So we're Absolutely. done with phase one. We knocked it out of the park for the community. Everybody loved it. Staff loved it. People in town loved it. I think that was a great ending. It's perfect. It was done well. I think, I'm being very candid, I think you would all be better with a different chair of someone that you would feel that is more in tune with you and, and better and do what you want to do. I, I'm not taking that offense to anything. I'm just saying it's been a, an, an enormous haul for the last 10 months and I too have a life. Mm -hmm. I too have a life, and of so it of is. Course. That's why we're trying to make suggestions that would help make your life easier. That's all we're trying to well, do. That's what I, all I am making do. your lives easier. Look at it this way from my point of view. I think I'm making your lives easier because I think someone in this group will probably be a better personality than mine mm -hmm. to facilitate this for the next phase, and I have no problem saying that. Okay. Um, you know, when I sat down with our town manager and spoke with him about my concerns of what were going on across the board about the CPA, particularly the issues I was having with Town Hall, which are still not resolved, quite frankly. I just said, look, you know, I, I don't think I have the support of my committee, in all honesty. I will get us through the startup phase, because it's, it's like a business thing, and you have to go. See, I feel like it would be more disruptive, uh, and I think that that's why I third the motion. I think it would be more disruptive at this juncture because we are literally halfway through a big process of dealing yeah, with I don't, I don't really think so, in all honesty. I don't think we're halfway. What, you, what, what percentage would you say we're through this, the CP plan process? A third. A third. Okay, a little more so than a third. And, a third and, and, of the way. And maybe more. You don't seem like the kind of person that's going to just say, at a third of the way, I'm done. And that's, no, I'm not quitting the committee. I'm no, not I know, but I'm just saying that like you're the kind of person that just seems to me that you want to see something completely through. Phase one. Phase one is getting that CP plan done. 
Um, but, but if you really don't want it, then I think we just need to open it up. And that said, it, you are fully with it. We would all be disappointed. But you are fully, obviously, within your rights to say, I respectfully decline mm -hmm. this nomination. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you won't be constantly disappointed in us. Because I'll be honest with you, that's, I feel like I'm being berated at every meeting. Mm -hmm. If Whether it's justified or not, that, that's a matter of personal opinion. But I didn't join the CPC. You know, I, I'm on, on the planning board. We, we all show up every month. We read the stuff ahead of time. We, we visit the sites. We do what we need to do. Am I as invested in the CPC? Because maybe there's more people and maybe not. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to come here and be constantly reminded of how I'm not living up to your standards. I don't, it doesn't make me feel good. And it makes me maybe not want to be on, on the committee. I'm not quitting the committee, but this is not how I, you know, I, I feel like I deserve a little more respect than to be constantly reminded as a collective that we're not living up to your standard. And I'm sorry. I'm it's a working honest. committee, Jason. It's deadlines are just a standard anywhere you go. I, I can't keep going through this. I, I send you memos well, out again and again. Go ahead, John. How did you hope to have come out of this discussion? I mean, uh, I a new chair, honestly, John. Well, then why didn't you well, simply say, I'm sorry, I decline? She hasn't said it yet. She hasn't well, accepted I, 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 yet either. I understand, so. right. but instead We're of... In the discussion phase. Phase. Because it's a candid, on-the-table discussion of where we but are in, after 10 months of, of, of trying to work but, together. But so in other words, if there's the possi it seems to me that if we're having this discussion, that you must think that there's the possibility that things could be better in, in which you would want to remain as the chair. And I think what some of us are trying to say is that that there are also ways in which the current you know, uh, atmosphere, what I want to call it, don't work, doesn't work for us. And Correct. We also would like to see some things change. And I hope that, um, first of all, I tremendously value, and you may not believe this, but I tremendously value your uh, chairpersonship. Or, or want to say it because of Woman. all Woman. You know, because of all the because of all the thought you put into it because of all the energy you put into it and I really admire that and I hope that there's a way that we can continue to work together and in which you will remain as chair and in which we can all feel valued as members of this committee and all feel that we're making a contribution to the best of our abilities and you know if things don't work out the way you think they ought to, I'm sure that you will let us know. I mean, it may be in, in an email that says, I'm disappointed that you haven't you know, responded this way and this way and this way, not necessarily a statement at the, at the you know, full meeting, um, but that, that, that we can mm, work this out, if you will. Um, if, that's, if that's just you know, not a possibility, then I think we've just you know, perhaps wasted a whole bunch of time and the, the bottom line is simply that you don't want to be chair anymore. So perhaps we should continue this discussion. Perhaps we should not end it now and, and all reflect on how we might make this better. And uh, you know, unfortunately, with the open meeting law, we can't just all send each other emails about you know, what we propose, um, but uh, try to come up with ways to, to work this better. We'll try to come up with ways to work with committees the way that we've been describing. So are you, are you suggesting that we possibly postpone the, uh, the nomination of the chairperson for another month, take it off the table? Um, uh, and, and, and also, that would be one way to it. To Dennis and I would often be a subcommittee of two, and we will take over the logistics of setting up the next public forum. We'll work with Lene and uh, Goldston. You won't have to worry about it. <laughs> right, One last thing off the it's table. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I just volunteered him. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I've already booked all the dates. I booked and I would like to say I followed up with you immediately. And this is what's so annoying to, to you know, that you feel like you're, you're oh, I shouldn't get emotional. Let's say, they, right after the last public forum, I complimented you and the team. And I offered a suggestion, but you say nobody does anything. It's so your suggestion, Maria. You said, when I you asked me if I was satisfied, and I said, yeah, I was really happy about the turnout, and I 
Um, as I said in the meeting, I hope everybody would be an ambassador who attended and bring somebody new with them the next time around, because I'd like to double the attendance. And you looked at me and you said, oh, well, that's really overshooting things. I think you'll be lucky if you get half the attendance. That wasn't really very uplifting was, after I right worked at, my tail off. Well, that wasn't an attack. I don't know why you construed that as an attack. It's not me. an attack. It's just kind of, I'm sitting there going, oh, we did it. We really did it, and it was really good. And there was so much stuff going on behind the scenes that you're not even aware of, and it was great. Mm -hmm. And it would have been nice to just end that evening there, and I'm thinking, already, it's like, oh no, well, you know. It's I just, you, you have again high expectations. That was in the parking lot, yes. number one. So that was in the parking lot. Yes, but, We're exhausted. It was not my follow-up email that I'm referring to right now. That was a conversation in the parking right. lot, and just to Bob's exact comment, to set a lot of those people, I know some of those people came out to just find out what's going on. Right. So they're not, they're, they may not be the same group. Just like Bob said, it's gonna be hard. So I was start par partly planting a seed in your head that you know we might not be able to reach that bar again. Not that we should try and work our tails off to try, but that sometimes those expectations, today, you ever heard that expression, today's expectations or tomorrow's resentments? And we don't want to live like resenting each other and resent, you know what I mean? So I was just saying, you know, be Look, careful. We, we talk a different language. We all talk a different language mm -hmm. because I go back to a meeting where both you and Jason thought that because of me trying to get people to email their, they have email lists and everything, so both of you used the word badger, that you weren't going to badger people. Now, that was my word. Yeah, I and, and Jason, no, Jason seconded it. He seconded it. And I, that really stunned me, I have to admit, because I'm thinking, Badger, we're doing something really exciting for our community. We're trying to make people aware of it. We should be saying, you know, I'm excited to be part of this experience. I, I hope you can engage with it, bring your ideas to the table, whatever. This is what we're doing. And I just thought, wow, they think of this as badgering. We have meeting in a box. You know, is anybody volunteering to say that they're going to reach out into this community to go do some kind of thing with a running group, a mother's group, any kind of I group? Was my, I was thinking of having a little neighborhood meeting, okay, actually. Okay, super. That's exciting to hear that. I was, and I was thinking, you know, in, inviting certain people that may plant the seed in their head to have another meeting in the box. So, so great. And, and my email to you was something along the lines of what was the tally of how many people attended right. and that I would write a follow-up blurb to get more traffic to the survey. So I did follow up with Connery. I never saw your blurb. A blurb. I know. I did. I've had a lot of funerals and I haven't had a chance. I'm sorry. Okay. But I plan to do it. It will be done. So this is like, it's like, you're, it's like we're never good enough. It's, it's a like, month later though, Maria. That's all I'm trying to say. And so for me, again and against the environment that I come out of, never, never is that you always have a follow-up plan. You do something. But the it's survey is like on a whole month more. So what, what there's, the, the deadline has now even been extended. So there's a whole month more. So in your head, you've got so these deadlines. Like that's how I feel. I feel like in your head, you've got deadlines. That we're well, not all aware of. We have deadlines. Well, I, I, I don't know what deadlines that you think that we've all missed because I don't really see, see that. But we can be more clear about that. This is a deadline in an email. This is the time frame. You know, I see we have a deadline right now for, for, to get something to Avery. You know, so that to me. No, to Lene. Oh, yeah. Lene is always the oh, sorry, conduit. Sorry. I just want to reinforce that mm -hmm. too. It's very important because we can't have things going every single which way. And that's what was also going I on. I get it, but I'm just trying to point out that you were like, nobody responded with anything follow up. I did, okay, after the first public forum, with and, concrete yeah. ideas of what to do next. There you was, asked me the count and you were going to do a blurb. Mm -hmm. Great. I said, great. Okay, fine. I don't do anything for a month. So, okay, I had already, I already and had I my thing the next day. thank you on multiple emails that you sent. Thank I you. appreciate this is the thank you, Maria. This but, is uh, okay. useful information. This was very detailed. I'm trying to give as much information to everybody. Sometimes it surprises me. You say, oh, go on. You know, we don't have to worry about that. But I really try to involve <coughs> everybody in every single thing. You can start telling me, I don't need to know about that, but I, you know, trust is important. I certainly have had enough stuff going around that I thought, okay, I'm completely transparent about everything. I try to make sure you're all informed about as much. If you call me on the phone, I fill you in on any questions you want to ask me. I mean, that is my nature. It really is. And so when I get umpteen emails all the time, 
you know, that's like another job for me to respond to all these emails. I try to acknowledge everybody that I got an email or I did something, so I, I, you know I've received it. But there's a lot going on. And so which is it? Do you want us to write you in response to all your emails back to you or no? So it's like Well, when I send out a major email and I don't get any response, then I'm like, okay, did I go off the cliff? Did I go into the void? When I get an email, Jason sent me something the other day that there was a mistake in an email that I sent to him. I had two addresses and I just said thanks. Mm -hmm. I corrected it. Just so he knows. I got it. I corrected it. I took out his other email. Um, you know, that's just normal stuff for me. Mm -hmm. So we all may be operating, uh, I remember you said in a meeting, well, you just have to know that if somebody doesn't respond to you, that means they have nothing to well, add. that's exactly what I was just going to say right now. But I didn't know that about you. So you're assuming that you and I work at the same, how can I, it's not values or something. You assume that we are do working in the same track. Like you may work that way with your architectural firm, mm -hmm. but that's not how I work where I have worked. Where but it, I feel like you've been making the value judgment by saying that you no, said I that, that, know that what it's, you did. it's like polite, it, it, it's proper to answer your email even to say that I don't have anything to add to this and that if I don't do that, you think I'm disrespecting you. I don't know where you are. Now that you've well, told me, no wait Jason, now that you've told me what your MO is, if I don't respond, don't, you know, means go ahead. But then I, there was something else I had to address immediately because we had to make a change and we had put something in the meeting and then I got an email saying, well, who made this decision and how was it made? Well, you know, to me it's like we're in the, we're in the throes of trying to get something done. This, this flyer was a perfect example. And I'm not trying to pick on you, but there were people in this committee that thought we would be ready by June. Do recall, many people didn't want to hire a consultant. We were going to do a meat and bones thing. I think you're all beginning to understand how much work goes into this. Tell me if I'm wrong. But there was something then, and then it was kind of like, well, I had to make a decision because I had to make it cleaner and simpler because of how the flyer. Was this about the, the flyer? But I want to tell you, I went through great pains to phrase it in such a way that... I found this a little strange, but it's too late for me to be giving this feedback, so I acknowledge that I don't expect anyone to act on it. You know, like, it was very important to me to make the point it's that fine. I'm not the kind of person who, like, chimes in five days later Monday and says, morning quarterback I, I want, exactly, I don't do that. And okay. I wanted it to be clear that you understood that I wasn't doing that. Okay, but let me let you know something else that went on. Somebody okay. in this committee put out the draft of what we were doing. I was with Marsha one day working on the design because we had to do something for the logo so they could be sized properly for other entities. And I click on Eventbrite, and it is there that this is being sponsored by Invest in Watertown, the group that was working to pass the CPA. It's not the, the final flyer that we printed. And the person that put it in there is looking like he's a sponsor of this. I immediately texted him and I said, could you please tell me where you got this, why you've posted this, and please take it down. This is a CPC event, as clearly noted, and the, you're going to really put a, a, a wrench into the works. Then I ran into the person personally and didn't want to tell me where he got it. I mean, there's so many things that have gone on that you don't even know about. And I'm, believe me, it's like, am I supposed to call everybody all the time? There's, there's just, it's, it's the proofreading that we had to go through to do that survey. I cannot tell you. And yes, everything represents us. And when I see umpteen typos, and, and, and the same thing spelled four different ways, and, you know, I had to say to them, the next time we get a document, give it an editing form. We're not going to change the wording, but this was an enormous amount of work again that was done. What? How many times did I have to go through it? This is what I'm saying. You so don't know everything else that's I, going I don't, on. I don't, I don't maintain it. Right. Okay. Um, but this is, it's kind of a circular argument. I guess what I would, um, in, in the interest of just not going through it all again. We don't have to. Like, just if you don't want to be chair, then, then politely decline and, and we'll figure it out next time. But I just don't want to go through another year of, and I don't think you do, I know you don't either. No. This is not good for your, no. you know, for your... Um, you don't have to like me, you do have to respect me, and that's what it really comes down to. But, and I've worked really hard to to share everything, to make sure we do quality work, and, um, you know, I'm sorry, I just feel there's a huge resistance here, and I don't know how to work through it, and Bob, I don't mean to cut you off. No, you yeah, your I, hand I, I'd like to make a comment from probably the one that's done the least on this committee, myself, but I would um, like I, to I, say I, that... I'm with you on that. Um, I might be no, I'm, I'm ahead of you. So, um, 
I don't think we'd be to the point we are without a low deal. We all know that. We have all recognize that. We all have our shortcomings. Whether we recognize them or not, we know them now. <laughs> but we, you know, we need to be a better committee. She's had to not only kind of like do everything, really, we all admitted that, but she had to go through the whole machinations of the bureaucrats in this building to get someone hired, to get a phone line, to get a website, to, I mean, all these things that, you know, would drive someone absolutely crazy. And then we know now that we're not putting enough time in, and we all can admit we're probably not. I don't think I am, but um, I'm not going to speak for everybody. She's unhappy with the way it's going. I think Alan's right. Maybe we should go up, John, postpone of the month. Maybe she says, no, I don't want to go another month. But I like, you know, if we like the idea of committees, think about it, uh, small committees to take on tasks. I don't know if it's going to work, uh, if, but if I, 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 I do I respect the work that's been done to this mm -hmm. point. 33%. If we've got 66 more, we've got a lot of work left. And it's going to take a whole committee to get it done. Can I put, just put out the idea? Maybe we need professional help. You know, whether it's Elodie as the chair or someone else as the chair, it's just something to think about in terms of uh, I don't know what you call it, an organizational consultant, a, a you know a process, someone to you know talk with us all and hear all our gripes uh, and, and expectations and. Know, try to help us through this. I don't know. It's it's you know it's another expense, but you know, just putting it out there is something to think about. Well, that, let me kind of piggyback on that also. I mean, I don't know if the May is available for forty hours a week, but if it was not a part time but a full time coordinator, would that alleviate some of the burden? I, I, you know, I, I honestly don't know because there's so much that Lene doesn't know right now still. I mean, that's not just, she doesn't know enough about the town and, and a lot of things. The there's there, there, are, there are a lot of wheels going on here. So, um, you know, and I don't think she wants to work full time. That's the no. other issue that you may speak for yourself, Lene. No, I, I don't want to work for you. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it wasn't that serious. Um, no, so, you know, look, you know, I, if, if you're going to form committees, I would love to hear what you're forming, and I'd like to hear how that works and, and what you would be doing and what your take on that would be. And as John said, the difficulty there is that we just can't all hang out and brainstorm about these things. We always have to have meetings. I will tell you honestly, uh, when I was asked to be on this committee, I said, well, is this a working committee in my interview? Because I knew how much work there was, and oh yes, this is a working committee. You know, it's not you just show up and vote on something. And then you know, there were other people that observed the meeting, and they laughed at me. They said, "You really thought that everybody was going to, you know, put their shoulder to the wheel?" And I said, "Well, I was told this was a working committee." You know, and so you know, maybe I was given some false information, whatever you want to call it. But um, you know, so. That's where my frustration is. And I mean, honestly, it's been a real rough haul from April to December. It's been a crush for so many different reasons, for so many different reasons. And it's not like I can call somebody up every time and say, oh, this is a real problem. You want to come in and solve a problem with me? But have you done that? Way. I've reached out to different people at times. No, yes, I, I have. I've, I've said many times I would love to meet with you and the consultant over various things like the survey. And did I, was I taking that? The consultant was no. not going to meet with us for the survey, Mark. They are not going to meet with us individually. I'm just saying their modus operandi. I said with you. Yeah, I was okay. I offered that. Yes, and but then you and Maria did your subcommittee. That's no, what I understood. No, that was after our subcommittee. I said after, never mind. When we asked whether we could join on the video conference. What video conference? I'm not sure what you're talking about. You know, the talk on that you've done on the cable TV. Nobody asked me that. No, nobody. No, you didn't ask any of us to join. You, I got a last-minute call on a Friday to say, would I come in and do a promotion for the CPC? Yeah. So I said, well, when when are you going to do this? I was doing it on a Monday. Yeah. Fine. Good. You know, it was like that. Yeah. Is that a problem for you? No, but you know, it might. Others would be willing to. Go into that with you. 
Well, I think we should wrap it up on a yeah. positive yeah. note. Yeah. And I think uh, her work from April to December got us a great turnout in January. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate that. I appreciate Thank you, that. I appreciate it. I like it makes us look good. Thank I'd like you to remove much. the table the election of the chair and move also to adjourn the meeting. Uh, can I just I like that? say one more thing? Because I, I, I want it in this mm -hmm. on a on the note like Bob said. Mm -hmm. Things got a little real right now and I I was very honest with you, but I want to make sure you understand that I don't think we could have gotten again as far as we did without everything that you've done. And I totally respect your your passion about all of this. Yeah. And I know that that makes for some very difficult conversations, but I don't want anyone to come away from this feeling attacked personally by me. I don't feel attacked personally at all, Jason. Okay. I've got a pretty broad back. I just know that I'm doing this in the best interests of the committee. This is how I feel. I don't, I'm, I, I'm not ego-driven to think that I am the be-all and end-all in this committee. I am not a person who's trying to have control, as some people have alluded to. There was just so much to be done. There were so many deadlines to meet, and there's still an awful lot to be done. And, you know, the committee might slow down if I'm not being this cracking the whip, whatever anybody wants to call it. And, and that's fine. The committee will find its own pace, right? Mm -hmm. Any person who's in charge going forward, they will yeah. they will do it their way. Go ahead, Dennis. I agree. You want a table. I'm no, sorry. No, I, 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 I want to ask a question. Sure. And you've done so much research, so you can answer this very easily. Uh, what is the average time a new committee, new CPC committee, gets to before they give out money? Two years, two and a half years? Eight, usually around 18 months, I would say, pretty much by the time they get through. Just, you know, I mean, look at all the delays that went on. So we really got sworn in in February. We are now just out from our first year, you know, from mm -hmm. there. I'd say 18 months to two years. And it really depends on who's on the committee, too. I mean... No, I, I agree. I'm just saying, you know, everyone seems to be in this great, big, big rush mm -hmm. down the road. If we did it in 19 months or 20 months, I don't see it being a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. it, I think we're in a rush. I don't think any of us are rushing. <laughs> well, we got all these deadlines we have to meet, so. Well, yes. well so, but when you hire a consultant, yeah, you yeah, don't want to yeah. pay them for 24 <laughs> months. Exactly. <laughs> the longer so you, the longer you, you have have to to pay them, them by that way, we are paying them for oh, certain God. phases of a project, for certain tasks that have to be accomplished. We did that very carefully right. within our scope of work. Yeah, but you're right. correct but in it's, general, Linnea. But also, they have their. They also have a schedule. They have other projects. It's like exactly. Right. Uh, yeah. I just want to say again right. that when I first spoke with the consultant and we set this very aggressive schedule, which deep in my heart I knew was completely unachievable. For, by the way, but there were people here that wanted to go, 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 and then we changed the schedule again, and uh, both. I don't think Avery was part of that meeting at that point, but um, uh, both Jen and um, Anna both agreed that we needed we needed more time. And I said, your job as a consultant for us is to say you're trying to go too fast mm -hmm. because there was too much being jammed in too quickly, and it was to me it was a ridiculous schedule. And that's what you look for from a consultant. You look for that feedback saying, I think you're trying to squeezes too quickly mm -hmm. and I think they were happy to adjust the schedule mm -hmm. as we did right. and they could probably even adjust it a little yeah. bit more yeah. given everything we have to do so I know you so wanted to adjourn the meeting there's a motion on the floor yes, Dennis sorry. you want to repeat it please I move uh, first of all that we table the election of the chair and that we adjourn the meeting second all in favor aye opposed hearing none motion carries good evening Okay. Thank you, everyone.